So, uh, uh, p politics happened again, huh? They keep, they're still doing that. A lot of politics. People dropping out. Biden uh, issued Order 66. Um, and now the field is clear. Uh, uh, it's, uh, ooh, man, man. Uh, uh, crazy stuff. And uh, it makes Super Tuesday tomorrow in, in both of our home states. Uh, in Texas and California makes it all the more interesting yeah I know I, I've only I was only on Twitter for a few minutes but uh, hearing, hearing bits and pieces of so uh, obviously Pete dropped off dropped out a, a few days ago yesterday yesterday and then uh, along with, well Tom Steyer dropped out uh, when Saturday night um, <laughs> after my, after he after he backed that ass up with uh, juvenile, um, and then uh, uh, Pete dropped out yesterday. Hmm. Amy Klobuchar <laughs> dropped out today, and now they are both going to endorse Joe Biden. Uh, it is pretty clear that the message that they want to send is: if you don't like Bernie Sanders, there is only one person to vote for and he uh he is not a fan of corn pop his name is joseph robinette biden robinette it's his name okay okay <laughs> <laughs> he's got a girl he's got a girl's name <laughs> uh but holy crap yeah oh so much crazy stuff a uh, uh, public enemy broke up because of <laughs> bernie sanders did they break up or did they just kick out um flavor flavor but flavor I mean, flavor. a public enemy is three components mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh professor griff who's no longer in the group flavor flav and chuck d mm -hmm. obviously chuck d is the revolutionary energy behind it flavor flav was that element that kind of made it very unique right yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, they fired Flavor Flav uh, from Public Enemy because he was talking shit about uh, about Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I mean, what what was the last time Public Enemy did something though? Is a good question. I mean, really, they're Probably almost not. personally here for like to do um, political rallies. Yeah. Like that's most what the the worth of public enemy is these days like that and licensing out bring the noise or, yeah 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 anytime that you want to do a you want to establish that you're in the 80s uh, uh and and your story involves black people then public enemy is here mm -hmm. for your licensing for all of your licensing yo 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 Hey. Uh, by the way, we are live because uh, I, I had such a crowd for uh, politics talk on my channel that uh, I decided to rate it, bring them all over here. So, well, I, I, I believe I can go ahead. Uh, that's that's relevant to my interests because um, uh, the headlines make me happy and sad. There's two games. The more interesting the headlines get, the more I think, well, shit, I don't, I don't want to bother Justin. <laughs> he's got even more work he's doing right now. And then what I do is I go to your Patreon and I check to see how much it's climbed in, in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's really a remarkable time. I mean, it's like, uh, I'm so, so excited for you, but I'm also aware of how valuable the real estate of your time becomes with each incredible, earth-shattering, surprising news story. 
Well, look, on my channel, because we do the poll dance, so we, we read the poll results, right? Hmm. But we also have the campaign undertaker who tolls his bell whenever a, a campaign ends. Uh, and we had the very rare crossover of while doing a poll dance, the campaign undertaker would not be denied because Amy Klobuchar dropped out of the race while we were doing it live. Which, uh, which, 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 by the way, uh, the moment you read Buttigieg out, you're like, oh, Klobuchar's got to be happy to death. She died of happiness. She, she, her campaign exploded with the opportunity to be the centrist. I'm gonna read. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna read uh, uh, a text I got from from your friend of mine, Matt Donnelly, yesterday. Chloe bleeding in the corner of the saloon can now barely get herself upright, stumble out to the dusty street, and die. <laughs> <laughs> and I just responded back, her last words, who's stupid now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not not to delay us, but uh, but like all of this boils down to word behind the firewall is, hey, centrists, get in line behind Biden. Like, he and executed Order 66. He just, he put out the word and, yep. and just said, like, I mean, that man has won one primary state. One! <laughs> My it's bleeding eyeball answer. told me that you must all get in line. <laughs> next, next, week, next week, the at Joe Biden facts account tweets that Joe is actually a clone. Last night, my teeth fell yes. out of my face and then began to chatter on their own, and they spoke to me. Get them in line. Execute Order 66. And now the progressives are furious that Elizabeth Warren isn't dropping out because they're like, all right, well, all the centrists are dropping out to... to Holy shit. Her Wow, Biden. that's interesting. Warren could be the death of Bernie's chance, uh, his mandate. And and uh, and it doesn't look like they're on real great terms <laughs> between the two of them. Um, man, man, <laughs> man, this probably, that's some crazy trash. <laughs> that's some crazy trash, dude. No, the, for real, the the dead speak. <laughs> uh, this is uh, uh we have live sound of uh, 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 uh joe biden uh, uh after his win in south carolina execute order 66 <laughs> there we go i was live there i was live in, in south carolina. it just it does it does fit the palpatine i mean that does seem like a move palpatine would do is right at the epic battle immediately take a shuttle out and start fortifying his next gotcha moment. Um, the final thing that would happen would be a Bloomberg dropped out. Um, that seems like, I mean, I, 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 I don't think we've talked much. I, I have been very, very strong on uh, Biden absolutely cannot beat Trump. Uh, I thought that if Buttigieg, I, I, man, I want to say as far back as almost a year ago, I was claiming that if Buttigieg can make it through, which would be unlikely, then he could defeat tr Trump. We've never talked about whether or not Bloomberg can do it. Um, uh, spoiler alert, he can't. Uh, in that uh, he's not going to, I mean, now he's he's the third nipple. Like, like he's just got a, a half billion dollar campaign that right now is the only moderate other thing other than Biden. Well, all the other right. Democrats have coalesced behind one person. I, I can't imagine him staying in after Super Tuesday. And I think that there's a legit chance that he dropped half a billion dollars into the race so he can drop out before anybody could vote for him. Has he been on a ballot yet, Mike Bloomberg? Nope. The Will first he... time that he's on a ballot would be tomorrow. tomorrow. Wow. And now the question is, do you want to be the reason, now that everybody else has followed suit on the on the centrist side, do you want to be the reason why Bernie Sanders gets more delegates than he would get otherwise? <laughs> this is this is weirdly like within the democratic framework. This is the end scene of the last Star Wars movie where everybody shows up at the last minute like they all came. We're all behind yeah. you, Biden. <laughs> Just please don't let the weird one be the nominee. Weird one. I mean, I'm, I'm certain that's how uh, that's that's how a lot of Democrats feel.
I mean, that's right now, it has never been clearer from the centrist side. If you don't like Bernie, vote for Joe Biden, and everyone's just going to forget that this house is haunted. Like, everyone's just going to, they just, the, the Democrats have just committed that it's like, like, ah, oh, whatever. Like, like, sure, the the books move, you know, they fly out. And, and yeah, <laughs> like sometimes the, the bathroom walls bleed. Uh, uh, but you know what? It's nice. It's in a good neighborhood. It, it's very, very, it, it's polling very well with black voters. Like, maybe, maybe that's why Warren hasn't, is going to wait until after Super Tuesday to drop out so that. Oh, uh, it, that could work. If it if it ends okay. up looking like a three way race, then she becomes kingmaker and just throws everything to Bernie's side. No, she'll probably still go to Biden. That's Warren. The yeah, Warren and Bernie hate each other. <laughs> hate each other. It is. <sighs> it is. Now uh, we're we're gonna see exactly how much they can can carry on with each other in terms of the uh, uh progressive aims because uh, mm -hmm. like the there is bad blood yeah it, it, what i was saying is like if if, if it, i i'm assuming it's already a done deal that warren will eventually support biden and rather sneak some bernie votes to warren uh that those delegates can be given to biden after super tuesday rather than saying go vote for biden even though i'm sure she has a sizable oh that's of interesting candidates. so so sort of a, a shadow whisper uh, endorsement where it's like you don't have to publicly say the thing but then you leverage all your support in favor of the well, thing the, the, the question is i mean does she <laughs> the, the, the the map has been so quickly redrawn like i don't even really know the moves anymore because i thought that klobuchar was gonna stay in um uh, uh just simply because she was running neck and neck with bernie in minnesota so now she's out if she's off the ballot like does she just tell people at this biden event she's gonna do tonight like hey vote for me anyway i'm out or does she say vote for joe biden like i guess she would have to right otherwise she'd just stay in yeah, I mean, that's the nature of endorsements, right? I mean, the timing's weird, but... Uh, we're still waiting on Andrew, right? Yes. Okay, here, yeah. uh, I'll take advantage of the moment. Okay. Not an issue when I can load it up today. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> Um, so Mike Bloomberg saying that there are no plans to drop out. We're just 12 hours away from Super Tuesday. I feel great, and you should too. In three months, we'll have, we we built a national campaign that's showing the nation why Mike Bloomberg is the best candidate. Uh, live on the line, live on the stream, we have Andrew Main, who is uh, coming coming down from some tech All right, let's run. <laughs> hey, Andrew. Hello, hello. Uh, by the way, guess. we are live. We are live uh, on on the stream because I had a I had a big audience because the politics went crazy this morning. Yeah, they're still doing politics. Turns out. Yeah, Biden executed Order sixty six. Oh. Justin, yeah, I don't so know if you saw. Oh. There you go. There's Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Hey. Uh, did did you guys see? I did it. I did the thing. I ate the sandwich. Yes. Yes. You ate. You ate the new KFC donut sandwich, right? Yeah. Who boy. Uh, uh. How how is it? It tastes good, but it is not good to hold. I would imagine you're holding a very a, a warm, greasy ass donut. Well, a wet like a ve the, like a very wet glaze. Like that's like if it was like a Krispy Kreme where the glaze was still kind of set, I think it would be different. But it's a big donut, two big donuts, and the glaze is travels. It's it's very oh. loose <laughs> glaze, um, and so it, it it's just bad to squeeze and to hold, and it's gigantic. 
<laughs> I uh, realized when I logged on here, I was signed into my, I uh, moved into the apartment across uh, the courtyard from here. And I'd been testing the internet. I, I got fiber over there. That's why I synced the link. Mm. And uh, I realized, I'm like, this signal's not quite so good. I'm like, oh, because I'm connected to there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which is really strong, but it's going through several walls and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, When's the move? Um, uh, a couple weeks, a couple months? The move is, I get furniture on Wednesday. So oh, it's cool. kind of more waiting for like the bedroom set and stuff. Like I have this apartment for another few weeks. So it's nice. one of those sort of gradual leisurely moves that's nice especially if it's like yeah. in the same place and you can kind of do it whenever yeah nice i'm very lazy i'm very very lazy uh do you guys have a good weekend uh yeah man i got to watch tom steyer twerk on stage with juvenile so that was good that was oh, it was transcendent. <laughs> it was, it was this is what democracy looks like, Andrew. I don't know if you, I don't know if you oh, know. <laughs> what? Well, we're looking at what Iran has. Maybe. maybe <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Maybe it's a monarchy thing. Maybe we should give that another look. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me grab a coffee. Hold on. Hey, uh, Bryce, was, was, Bryce, was well, it you well, that recommended well, the game Slay the Spire? Yes. Okay. Did you play it? Uh, no, but. Um, because of the lock and key Netflix series, um, there, there, there just hasn't been a reason for me to just fire off random texts to, uh, uh, yours and my friend, uh, John Tilton in a while. Mm. And so I reached out to him to kind of see how he was digging lock and key. And then he randomly asked me how, you know, whether or not I tried slay the spire. And I was like, Oh my God, Bryce recommended it. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, it's, it's, it's fun to, uh, rediscover an excuse to reach out to someone who it's been a minute since you've you've chatted to, with. Hmm. Um, How's John? Is John doing good? Uh, I assume so. Uh, I, 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 I mean, he's John. He 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 freaking uh, built the, the the framework of scam stuff that runs to this very day. So my sure. guess is he's probably. Landing I figured on that his just feet. would have been one of the text messages. Like, you doing good? Uh, yeah. Well, well, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I am certain everything is awesome. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I'm really looking forward to just, you know, chit-chatting about all that stuff. Cause like I said, it's, it's been a minute. Although we did, um, uh, I've not told John this, but, uh, uh, we, this is more of an after things topic, but, uh, uh, David told me that we crossed over our 100,000th order on the scam stuff store wow. in this okay. last week, Nice. which is crazy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. less crazy when you think about the fact that it took eight years. But still crazy. No, that's still pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy. Uh, hey, Andrew, how's that bandwidth? Well, he was I just mean, saying he I'm hasn't not moved on into it yet. right now because I got to get into the new the new apartment. And we haven't put our furniture in there yet, so I'm on the old bandwidth. Oh. One last podcast to remind me what it's like. <laughs> I have a buddy who I show who moved in the complex near me, Peter Wax, and he's like, uh, he had a horrific. It's AT and T fiber. He had this horrific experience with AT and T, where he had multiple accounts, and they you know built them for like close to like you know twenty thousand dollars and stuff. And and I'm like, look at this. I'm like five hundred megabits down, and he's on the spectrum here where where we live, folks, is horrible. It's old copper wire that's just probably like you know pieces of tinsel somewhere along the way. And he's like, nope, not doing it. Hate AT and I'm like, dude, like. Dude, you know, at, like, at some point, uh, that loyalty's got to got to evaporate, right? But I'm like, I'm, I'd, I'd be like, oh, 500 megabits. Like, uh, how hard did you hit my mom? Did she heal? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know like, like. All right, you guys uh, ready to start weird things here? Heck yeah, Andrew, how you feeling? I'm feeling great. Okay, then I will count you guys in. In three, two. Oh wait, that was the official start of the stream because we were already live. Okay, our, the recording started. <laughs> 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 this is this is the part where he goes back and thinks of like, did I say anything that I would regret not knowing no, that we no, were I live? No, no, we were live. <laughs> I just I knew that I, that part of me knew we were live. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. The part of me that says the, the show officially starts was not there. Oh yeah, yeah. got uh, it. Are you guys ready to officially start the show then? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it. Okay, let me catch you in again. Three. Two. 
Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Who boy. And Bryce Castillo. Hey, that's me, everybody. I'm trying to figure out which Mythbuster you look the most like right now, Brian. Oh, no, no, no. My goal is to be the superposition, right? Where it's like, and it's perfect now because I have just enough of a ghost of the, the grown-in shadow of a beard, but I still have the walrus-like uh, handlebar mustache uh, kind of ghosting in there. It's, it's a, 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 a I'm, I'm, I'm the secret love child of, of Adam and Jamie. You know, uh, speaking of trying to grow facial hair, um, which I am not trying to do. All I can grow is a goatee, by the way. I just grow goatees, which means I know I was born for supervillain status. Um, <laughs> I came across, I found a, a thing because uh, I have like, I have like, like very, like I have like, I, my, my eyebrows are thinned out, whatever. I have like, you know, severe, like uh, uh, at, at times um, eczema, right? And, you know, doing some research on that, we should talk about that before, like how, looking online and doing like, you know, uh, blind searches or trying to do it like incognito mode. So you don't get like, you know, the advertising for every single pharmaceutical in the world. Yes. I came across, yeah, I came across a Reddit forum, which I wasn't looking for, but I found this thing like, well, this is interesting. It was people who are using, um, like Rogaine or Minoxidil to grow facial hair. Yeah. And it was a, a forum uh, of guys who were like spreading it on their faces and stuff to do that. Uh, was, apparently that, or, that, Super totally works, by the way. Also, uh, uh, getroman.com slash rogue. Use promo code rogue. Check out. <laughs> well, some, some of us have been looking into this. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll tell you what. I want to get it all over my face so I look like uh, like 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 the wolf boy from the Mexican circuit. <laughs> just put it. <laughs> just you, you know what? Just do a patch right oh, underneath your eye. Hey, here, here. Uh, You're mostly there, Justin. This I, know, one... I, don't need, I don't need a lot. I need to get over that hump. Uh, I would love to see the clickbait ad that just says this one trick will totally hide your eye bags. And the one trick is to put Rogaine right underneath your eyes. So you yeah. just grow an island of beard hair underneath them. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Like, you know, for winter times, you know, do the winter facial hair. <laughs> yeah. I'd Keep warm. Yeah. So uh, anyhow, thought I'd share that with everybody in the, the too much information category of weird things. It is weird. It is, um, just one quick side jag. It is surprising to me, like how not a thing it is to to use any of those products is now. Like like when we were what thirty years ago, um, it was like a thing if you were bald or balding or whatever. And now it's a choice. <laughs> like leaving your shoelaces untied, it's like it's a lifestyle choice. Like yeah, I don't give I don't give an F word. I'm I'm just gonna rock it bald. Oh yeah, I you know my in my family. Uh, my dad's bald, my brother's bald, and then my dad's brother has a full head of hair, and then I have the full head of hair, right? But I knew when I was in my early 20s, I didn't know where that coin was going to land, and I was still, you know, showbiz, whatever. And and I told myself, like, uh, I don't think I'd look good with the, you know, bald head. So, like, I'm like, oh, if 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 I got at the genetic lottery said, nope, you get your dad's side, um, I was like, yeah, totally cool. I would have been, you know, I would have used whatever means necessary to do that. I fortunately, I didn't have to, but I had a friend that, like, I remember he was, his hair was thinning. He came to me and he's like, I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe doing this. I'm like, dude, do it. Like, like it's, who, who cares? Yeah. You know, like, it's not, it's not like you're, you're doing anything wrong. You know, it's like, not or, really or, or even, your resume. or even, I'm going to use the word weird. Uh, or let's say you're not even doing anything weird uh, in a world where all of us are more conscious of, being on screen and as more of our communications is in the form of miniature press releases, whether it's in, you know, 15 second TikToks or, or Instagram videos or what have you. Uh, I don't know. There's sort of a, a literacy of how you want to present yourself that has become ubiquitous that I think is really interesting. Yeah. And I think, I think anybody who wants that fine, like, yeah, I, I don't hesitate for a moment to think, Oh geez, what, well, you know, let's, I, I'm glad we're past that point, you know, for the most part. So, uh, gentlemen, a while ago, we talked about some different ideas, like the future of social media, the future of being like a YouTuber or whatever. And, uh, one of our panelists had this very, I'm not going to use word idiotic, but suggestion of like, what if you just had a bunch of like artificial followers and it gave you the same sort of feedback. And I'm like, that's the worst idea anybody could ever possibly have. And it will never happen. 
End of story. Now, moving on to our next topic. Oh, wait. Um, apparently, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Justin, are you as confused as I am as to which of the two of us was the one that had that idea? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember who who did this. That but, does but, sound um, more like a Brian idea because I know I've been I've been infatuated with the idea of we've already had artificial players replace content creators, and it occurs to me that that uh, the idea of artificial consumers that that actually are in charge of real money, real clicks, real views, real shares, and all that stuff fascinates me. So that sounds like something I would have said if I was going to bet. I'm not naming names. All I'm saying is this. We're going to put this in the category. Whoever said it was the you were right. Andrew admits <laughs> you were right category. <laughs> <laughs> I think really two went in a row about this, too. Oh, that's right. I, that, that, because last week I solved the mystery of the of the cave with the pads of, of dinosaur chicken feet on there. Very disturbing trend here in World Trade <laughs> I tell you. Um, so uh, what this is, is there's a, a, a wired an article called Welcome to Botnet, where everyone's an influencer. And the uh, the story basically is is that uh, uh, Billy Chasen, who created a chart beat and uh, Turntable FM, um, is now worked on a, has a project where what it is is a basically I'm trying to figure out how I read the article. I'm like, I think I get what they're talking about, but not quite sure. Um, um, basically created like a botnet, and what it will do is it will you put post stuff whatever it will tell you. It's like its own social network, and they have. He says they got like you know hundreds of thousands of bots that will then tell you what's cool or what they like or whatever. I mean, um, uh, if if you recouch it in more Hollywood terms, uh, if I were to say, hey, we have a team that created a focus group simulator. It's machine learning algorithm. It's based on uh, statistically significant hundreds of thousands of posts or whatever. Um, we've tested it against real life focus groups and it seems to have a 98% uh, tracking, you know, to be similar on both. Um, uh, it will cost you pennies on the dollar compared to a real focus group. It seems like you'd go for that, right? And, and well, so- Well, it's not even- it's not even for a focus group. It's literally, if you go to, it's actually an app now called Botnet on the App Store. Literally what it is, it's just you you post stuff and only bots respond to you, okay? And and I, I think it's silly, but in a way you think about like, uh, like I mean, is it any more sillier than a video game score? Is it any sillier than like, you know, winning some in-game prize? So... I'm signing up for Botnet right now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. This way we're gonna have to, Bryce. You're gonna have to edit all this out as we all sign up for Botnet. It's called a, a so Botnet bots only, a social network simulator. So when you start up the app, it says warning: you are about to interact with bots. Everything you say and do here is private. There are no other real people. They have been trained with millions of conversations online, and that makes them sometimes unpredictable. And there's an I understand button. Well, and uh, I'll tell you what's not weird is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Why wouldn't you have a social media simulator? Like, like that seems like a fine thing to, I mean, I, 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 as, as the father of a 12 year old who recently had a video just kind of explode on TikTok, uh, in, in to, to the point of actually outperforming some episodes of Scam Nation and Scam School. <laughs> I, I, I love I, that you have that metric ready to go in your head as you're watching your daughters, you know. Well, like years. she's all excited and I have to think of like, well, how much of this do I want to feed into? How hard do I want to high five on all of this? You know, how am I going to top her? Or, or, or specifically, how much do I want to teach her the idea that her value as a person is determined by some numbers from an app algorithm or what have you? Um, and, uh, and and in fact, like uh, she, she was kind of upset at one point because I wasn't wasn't happy enough for her. But it's like, eh, kid, it's complicated. You know, like I don't I don't want to encourage you to be a hollowed out ghoul that chases whatever the next, you know, gives you bigger numbers. But I want to be like you, Dad. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, it's too oh, late for me, young one. <laughs> uh, all right. So I just posted on Botnet uh, doing my podcast, Weird Things. It currently is climbing up over 27,000 likes. And the wow. comments uh, are, this is the perfect episode to get me through the worst day. Uh I'm a musician myself, and I love this. I'm a fan of the song, I Want You by The Strokes. There's oh. a lot of emojis. Uh, uh, and then you hear your mom say, wait, that's not normal. What happened? 
uh, uh, what's different about weird things. I, I need a source on this ASAP. <laughs> weird things. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know exactly how much this necessarily so, passes the Turing test, but yeah. it is like authentic, random. Like this does look like the, the comment thread on like a very famous person's Instagram. If I there's can, a lot of great if, stuff. If I can inject some conspiracy, <laughs> it's called botnet. <laughs> And the very first thing it does is it asks you for a first and last name, and it dem you have to give it a picture for an avatar. I just, and give it, I like, just access signed to up, okay. and the first thing it did was have a whole conversation. She called and said, OMG, Brian Brushwood just signed up for Botnet. Oh, my God, it's Brian Brushwood. And now I'm watching as it populates. It says, if on my behalf, it, it, it yeah. tweeted. Hey everyone, it's me, Brian. I just set up my botnet, and I'm excited to hang up with her, hang out with you all. Mm. Um, I'm watching it go from five thousand to ten thousand to twelve thousand likes, <laughs> and I'm seeing. Can... Go ahead. You can, and the extras you can actually for ninety nine cents more. You can add troll bots. <laughs> 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 somebody somebody huh. just botnetted me. Ugh, I'm just here for the comments. <laughs> Great. Now I need to see the rest of the picture. Yeah, I wrote, hey everyone, I'm sorry, but I'm not part of that world. <laughs> somebody just responded, this is my spirit animal. By the way, I'm up to 23,000 likes for the post that I did not make that yeah. <laughs> on my behalf. <laughs> it's certainly neat. Uh, Do you guys are you guys feeling uh, how's everyone's endorphin levels doing right now? There is there is an element of just watching likes skyrocket that is on some level therapeutic if you've made your living on the internet. <laughs> like there is like a yes, you know that it is totally fake, but watching likes just skyrocket into the tens of thousands, uh, uh, there there is something there that I, I think is a uh, perversely therapeutic to me. So here <laughs> is. <sighs> If I were a sinister bastard, it would occur to me that a very powerful end game to this would be identifying who is both a botnet user and an actual creators, uh, a creator out in the real world, and then just suggesting, oh man, what if, <laughs> crazy idea, what if we had also created a real life accounts on YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. Uh, wouldn't it be great if they just showed up and showed you the same enthusiasm that you've come to enjoy on botnet? Wouldn't that be worth like, I don't know, money? Would creators, I mean, creators already know that those exist, that those yes. account farms exist. But I guess it would be the normal people who are, have never, who, who don't, uh, are, I, would yeah, be unfamiliar I, to that. It could be like, but I'm telling you, seriously, like, so I put up a photo of like uh, the thing I had for Shark Week. And so it's like the image of my arm with the LED thing. And it's smart enough to go like, I wrote a work in progress and I see people who are going like, uh, uh, that's a very realistic piece of artwork. Uh, other things like another bout of artwork stuff. Um, and then, of course, comment, no way, that's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to tweet out uh, hashtag. Weird things, all caps, FTW. There you go. I'm just going to make a post. On your botnet. Well, there's already a thousand likes. I mean, apparently a lot of people like hashtag weird things. 3,000 people, as a matter of fact. F sorry. I mean, that's... 5,000. I mean, that's the thing to think about, too, is the idea of... The, you know, we talk about the future where you have, like, the one monolithic, super intelligent AI. But imagine we create the one where there's trillions of bots that are smarter smarter than humans that are out there and you create stuff that's sort of like lurking or whatever they're kind of like uh um tribbles in a sense <laughs> man or as 1969 catherine uh bot netted me um <laughs> i'm pretty sure the guy on my right is my stepmom <laughs> Can, can, can they do this for podcasts? Recording the Weird Things podcast. We're at like 4,000 likes right now. The so, moment holy, he that. found out he had to put his D word in his face, I was so proud. <laughs> and this Classic. is the wholesome, oh, the wholesome bot. Classic. <laughs> Already, it is way more coherent than my regular Twitter feed. Yes, it really is. 
quote, I'm going to show you what's coming to you. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, God. I, recording the Weird Things podcast. Um, I, I'm still confused as to why he recorded himself hanging in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm so glad that the owner of this resort is a Trump supporter. <laughs> this is too close to reality. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> oh. All right. Fantastic so, episode. I recommend everybody listen to it. And what more can we say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is really cool. I'm. It, it's it's interesting to hear a project like this go from like here's the idea, here's the pitch for an idea, and also we have apps out now. Yeah. Like yeah. I think that is part of some of the magic at play here is that you can learn about it and then go do it immediately. <laughs> um, but it is he's back it, on it. You know. And touching back on what we talked about before and, and kind of I think when we went deeper into the subject is like so much of the algorithm that decides what gets in front of people is on. We don't know. We don't understand. We don't get to see it. But there's a neat idea to take the algorithm that decides what other people get to say and create this sort of like bot like layer sort of sort of thing that said like, you know, like, oh, here's an Instagram photo. And it's like, oh, like you only got this many tweets. And on the Instagram botnet, you know, uh, this was the reaction to it. And this is how you could calibrate it to like real humans. And, you know, I think like you were talking about that, Brian, it, the idea of that it, feedback loop would be great if it was more anthropomorphized. It is a little bit about like how, let's say, 538 constantly, capital T, capital A, talks talks about the algorithm or, or whatever, or, or the, the, the model that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just uh, sent botnet. I just posted, I hate bots. So far, it's been liked by 13,000 bots. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've been, well, let me see how many bots I've been liked by, Brian. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Top comment, PewDiePie should play Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, finally, someone's brave enough to say it. So you're telling me so, my life story of being a dog, and then you posted a photo of me and your dog? Yes, I did, but it just well, happened. My first one's at 180,000 likes, guys. I love how, by the way, this initially started with the idea of whether or not this would be compelling, and we've completely derailed the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, already like, it. I'm already deep into self-evaluation about whether or not I will allow my children to, to download this or tell them about it or anything. Oh. Oh, I I can see we are very, very we're we're very close to a crappy version and not too far away from a a good version, which will be a completely AI tender, and you know you'll go into it and you're going to choose the the you know particularly the you know you're going to choose the tender date sort of thing, and it's going to be you know oh. images and videos and sexy talk and all sorts of stuff. Can can I can I? Throw this at you. I don't. And keep in mind, I'm pretty far removed from the dating scene, but. I we don't hope. know that I hate the idea of like, hello, welcome to bot Tinder, where you have to play practice rounds against a computer in terms of being quick to respond, clever in your retorts, charming, uh, 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 thoughtful, clearly indicate that you're listening to the other partner or whatever. Like, you know, you're like, like basically you won't know whether or not you're talking to another person of your of, of your desired uh a matchup relationship or a bot but you're better off treating both the same because if it is a bot then that all contributes to your score and your placement and its confidence when it puts you in front of other people is that is is, is that like an unfair extroversion bias or something or yeah i i, I would hate if i thought the the problem is like I don't think it's enough to assume that every other every other human person will behave in the way that the app wants you to, and so if I if I'm like oh finally hey someone is finally messaging me back, and then at the end it's like congrats you've been talking to a bot, I'm going to be <laughs> incredibly pissed off. Oh no 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 I mean it would never say congrats that it would definitely just say all of this matters and then and then the congrats and would that's, come. That's way it all of it, the the congrats would come oh and think about this somebody might be 
talking to a fusion of multiple people where some of the responses are from one human A and the other is human B. So it's doing A, B testing, seeing how quickly you respond to what witticism in vaguely parallel conversations. I, and then and then the congrats is we did it. We found your match. But you're right. This is a I total think, Black Mirror episode. I mean, I think I think there's something to the idea of having, you know, like like, hey, if you want to improve use our simulator and you know it's a simulator and, and, and understand like here's you know yeah you, this 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 is a racist joke don't make that <laughs> you know like don't send the d pick right away <laughs> like don't do this which you know would maybe teach sociopaths how to behave more like humans which is good or bad which is possible but <laughs> you know of course the problem with you know dating apps is that like if you're using a dating app because you're trying to meet the person, the dating app is incentivized not to let that happen. The dating apps are semi they're incentivized to keep you paying your monthly subscription, which is, you know, always the sort of thing I always wondered, like, you know, when you go use a service like that, like, uh, you know, you think, like, what's your business? You know, in your best case, if you give the customer exactly what they want, they use you for two months and then they never use your product again. Right. Because they found happiness. Yeah. That's uh, that's the, the marketing campaign for Hinge, I think. It's like a delete delete Hinge. You know, go yeah. use the app and then delete it because you found the person that you were looking for. Well, and and you know the problem too, like a lot of apps was like they early on is specifically is they would hire people to go out on like short dates and stuff like that. Because if you had somebody who's paying like fifty bucks a month and let's say they're four or five months in, they're at a risk of can't of like of uh canceling their membership. Some of these dating apps, what they would do is they might actually get you a real date, like 30 or 40, like meet with a girl somewhere, whatever, for, you know, like, oh, we're going to meet at a bar here, whatever. And they'd be like, oh, cool, this is great. Well, you know, stay in touch, blah, blah, blah. Wow. That was the thing that was happening because they were, because you could pay, you know, you'd pay, you pay somebody like, you know, 40 bucks to go meet with somebody in real life and set them up to do four or five in a night. And so you're paying them 40 bucks to help retain this person in the membership. Yeah, wow. it, that it's, was, like, it's like, like 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 Netflix or, or any other the, the subscription things. You just really need to give them a win condition at a certain interval. Like every three months, they got to think, oh, this is worth it because that'll extend the life cycle of that uh, uh, subscription for another three to five months. You also had where they would keep like when you sign the agreement to let the for your profile, particularly the case of well, women, they would leave these apps, but then their profiles would still be circulating, but with different names and stuff with their images and whatever. Because the apps were trying to maintain the idea there was a far more availability. Hmm. That's so. interesting because uh, I know, like on Tinder, one of the things that you can report people for is like this app or this profile feels like a bot. Like it's mostly just if you if you feel like this is someone tr trying to spam or trying to get people off the service or whatever. Yeah, I don't know, and I don't, I, I you know, I don't know if Tinder does it now, but also like you can because they also have. From the outside, they're trying to prevent people who are trying to do services and create that stuff like this. But that turned out that was something they found on the internally that they were doing this, particularly when a lot of these apps were starting out. Because you you start a dating app, and first thing you get on, there's a thousand dudes looking for women, let's say, and there's no women there. What do you do? Create the illusion mm. of all these women. There. Was it, yeah. did, Didn't we talk about a bot that would like auto translate gendered pronouns, uh, he to her, she to him, and all that? Um, and and allow basically horny dudes to talk to other 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 horny dudes. Uh, no, um, amazing man. I must have read. I I forget where I read it. Maybe one of the fans can find it out. But but it's like I, I can almost see a place for that in this ecosystem where it's like, all right, I'm an AI bot. I'm reading the tea leaves. I see what time it is. Uh, I see the way you're talking. Uh, here's what you really want. Let me find someone else willing to swap pronouns and neither of we you know this, that the other is you know uh looking for a one night hookup the, the crying game yeah <laughs> but 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 like i i'm almost certain that's happened uh i i think somebody wrote a bot for tinder that did that automatically and uh and that was the punchline so but would, it, it seems like play, you could build that would, in yeah it would play the, the 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 aggressive talk against other aggressive talk, but with flipped pronouns. So correct, correct. So so basically, would, it registered a bunch of supposedly female accounts, and then would basically yeah. just play messenger, swapping pronouns between uh, 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 really so like really very, amped up a very, dudes. A very sassy version of like uh, uh, playing all the like chess grandmasters yep. against each other, right? But, exactly. But with uh, with dirty talk. Yep. Uh, well. well I'll tell you what, if that excites you enough to 
coax <laughs> some money out of your pocket, then you should head on over to patreon.com slash weird things. That is where you can support this show. Patreon.com slash weird things is your number one place for uh, you to get the custom RSS feed. Make sure that you get these episodes earlier than anybody else. And know that you are keeping this show going. That is patreon.com slash weird things. Gentlemen, I have an ambitious mission. Go uh, on. I need I need about two hundred million dollars. Uh, okay. Let me before I go look at those couch cushions. I mean, not that it's not going to be a great idea, but I mean, I mean there there's a lot of couch cushions to look under for that two hundred mil. Uh, I, I, maybe maybe just a, a back of the notebook sketch here. I think if we combine like the net value of like i mean everybody who listens to this podcast and maybe yeah. what we could all put on our credit cards and that's what i'm basically asking is every single one of our listeners to consider backing this mission okay i mean to to we the full to... extent of their current credit like all of us max yeah. out our credit cards for this yeah exactly that's what i'm saying is to get that extra card do this it's for a worthy cause okay um uh it's space mission oh. we want to we want to basically get hold of like a falcon heavy you know we want one of those the the the, the triple booster rockets right Okay. Yep. 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 It's space mission and recovery. All right. And this is my plan. Okay. I don't know if you've heard the news, but uh, uh, right now, how many natural moons are around Earth? I mean, as far as I know, we got we got the moon, which of course was the book, uh, uh, the subject of a oh man. I can't even remember the title of the book from so many years ago. It suggested that it's the fact that we have only one moon that caused life to exist on planet earth oh i agree mute mute you muted yourself mute. andrew oh that happened so we actually have an extra moon right now what? we do well you always want to have an extra just in case something happens to the one so what happens is periodically we'll capture something in orbit and you know something that has maybe a similar orbit to earth and we basically, a object, which is only like a few meters across, got uh, captured by Earth orbit, and it's actually probably gonna leave next month or so. Eventually it'll get ejected and go back onto its pattern, but we've got an extra moon right now, just swinging around the Earth, just hanging out. If you go look at the Wikipedia on it though, it's amazing where you see its actual like orbital path. It's completely insane the way it's sort of like going around. It's not like spinning around like ours, it's doing this wibble wobbly thing around the Earth, but we've got another moon right now. So. If I'm understanding you correctly, these two stories are related because much like the weirdo at the party, we have somebody just hovering around our orbit before he feels dejected and then heads on off to try to find somebody else at the party. We've got a, a, a moon here. we got to train, train it with bots on how to have interesting conversation. Oh, hey, man, we can go hang steal around. The moon. We can go steal the moon. We could fit inside of a spacecraft, a payload. We could go steal this moon and bring it down on Earth and put it on a coffee table, or we could sell it. Wink, wink, and become the men who sold the moon. Oh, my God. Or take it on tour. Just frustrate Justin. Sure. Let people pet a moon. We can all stand <laughs> on it like the little prince. <laughs> uh, so is this, a, is this an uh, intrastellar object or an extrastellar object? Or I guess is it inside or outside? Is Because is, we had that one uh, uh, tourist that, that went blowing through our space, uh, our, 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 I could say solar system, solar system um, that that was not a neighbor, but I assume this is a local guy, right? Yeah, this is terrestrial. It shares a similar orbital path as to Earth, and it just happened to get caught into our gravitational well and has been doing a little tour around there before it eventually gets ejected. This is the loneliest moon. I feel terrible for this moon. We go to the same we post office. We bring it to Disneyland. We hang out at the same Starbucks. We keep seeing each other, just sort of glancing at each other, him a little bit more than me. Uh, it's, little, it's, ugh. it's only a couple meters across. I'm saying, guys, we could fit this in the back of a pickup truck. We could literally, you know, be friends with be the best pet rock ever. Okay, real question. What percentage of Elon Musk's attention do you think is dedicated to the idea of like, you know, I could just steal this moon? Um, <laughs> in, in realistic terms, if you look at the orbital path of that thing, trying to get it would be a monumental task um, because you've got to be able to not just reach its orbit, but you've got to be able to match the speed of it, 
and then you've got to have enough uh, fuel left to then return back to Earth and be able to do that. So it looks to me from my armchair sort of uh, Tchaikovsky equations that this is a, a very, very uh, complicated sort of procedure. Um, but because um, like that's the problem with like sending, let's say, Starship even to the moon is that, you know, getting it back, you know, um, which you can. It just takes takes a way more fuel to do that than, than you, would, you, you would think. Um, so trying to get it because you've got to try to reach this and, you know, match it. It would be hard, not probably not impossible, when there might be a clever way to do it. <laughs> so what you're saying is there's a chance. <laughs> yeah. um, but I would, you know, I, well, we're living in an age, though, where it's not the most difficult you know, it's not impossible. Well, you and know. Th there are two factors. One is the mere fact that we detected this one indicates that there's probably more and that there are more opportunities for that. And meanwhile, we're seeing the race to space get cheaper and cheaper, which means and increasingly we are recognizing as a society that uh, attention is a currency that could be converted into dollars. So it's it's much like the coronavirus infecting all of North America. It's not a question of if, but when. Somebody's going to capture a yeah. moon, catch it by the tail, and take it on tour. Yeah. Well, last week we found out uh, that SpaceX is going to do a launch for NASA to go to, uh, was it the asteroid uh, Psyche, which is like got the metal asteroid, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. Like we're, we're now in that age where... Uh, these things are happening. Um, and I met, oh, by the way, I met uh, this weekend one of the people with Axiom. That's the company we talked about before that is building the private space station. Oh, nice. The one that they're going to attach to ISS and eventually yeah. separate and become its own thing, which is just, it's it's interesting because these things, uh, you know, they're not just the, you know, as Brian says, they're not just theoretical. These are things that are being done, being done right now and, and you know, can happen. Um uh, oh, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Did, while we're on the subject, did you guys see that explosion slash implosion of the test of the cylinder for the for the Tesla stuff? Or sorry, for the for the SpaceX? Yeah, so they're out uh, in in Boca Chica, which is where they're testing the different uh, the the different prototypes for the new Starship. They have prototypes SN1 and SN2. SN2 is the new one with new wells and new designs. SN1 was the older one where the one of the design, it popped its top. They resealed the top, and then they went to go fuel this thing up again, and basically it just ruptured from the bottom and looked like a looked like a modern rogue experiment. <laughs> it did. Well, well, it, it, it <laughs> reminded me of Mr. Wizard because, uh, uh, like, like, once the bottom ruptured, it launched up because of the release of whatever gas, but then the pressure differential, the whole thing just collapsed like a tin can at the mm -hmm. bottom of, 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 of the, uh, uh, the uh, whatever that trench is, Mariana Trench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've done, yeah, Mr. I remember Mr. Wizard doing the thing with like the metal can on the stove where yeah. it just implodes. Uh, um, yeah, that was like it, the phase we started to get like a little bit older and you know yell at the kids. Yeah, it's pretty great. If 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 you haven't seen it, definitely look up oh, Mr. Yeah. Wizard is a D word. That collection is so good. Yeah, I mean he was an awesome person, you know, but having to deal with those kids. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's it, it's it's a bit of a setback, but also it was the version one that they'd already been making changes on, and so it wasn't the ideal thing. They wanted this to happen, but they also like, oh well, we need to do these welds and. The problem they're having is like they're trying to basically take super, super, super thin uh, tanks, do welds on them, and have them strong enough to be under huge pressure, you know, and then cr have cryogenically cool cooled fuels, whatnot. So there's a lot of different factors, you know, playing into this. So stuff's hard. It is kind of interesting, though, that we have such uh, a, a, a focus on that level of testing. That, yeah. that we are, uh, uh, that, that's what's, what's so interesting is that. I don't know if there's ever in my life I would have seen coverage of like, oh, like Boeing test fails, like in, in epic, you know, capacity, which I'm sure there have been a million of them. Right. Like, I love you know, the, I love this the tweet that Elon Musk says he just he posts it and he says, it's fine. We'll just buff it out. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he had a couple weird tweets like, go check out the other one he had about like male depression or whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so uh, with flex tape <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> yeah. I I was thinking about this where like in perspective, like what was my biggest disaster this weekend? Ah, I missed that little part from IKEA, and so I had to use a quick fix, but I know I gotta go back and go get it. What's Elon's weekend like? Oh, I don't know, half million dollar prototype just exploded on the path. <laughs> like, oh geez. Um Dare to dream. Dare to dare to have bigger failures like that. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, do you guys just want to jump into picks? Yeah, sure. I'm down for it. All right. Uh, hey, so uh, I'm tricking the family into watching a bit of that uh, Netflix series, Lock and Key. I don't know if we've talked about it on this show, but of course, uh, I am a tremendous fan of the graphic novel. And um, the rules for television are a little bit different. Stuff that you can convey subtly and mysteriously in a graphic novel in television, you kind of sort of have to just spell out flatly, and those things set, tend to sound pretty silly in a television format. But uh, the the show has been good enough. Uh, it's TV 14. Uh, does an okay job of being spooky and mysterious. And to my delight, my daughter, my eldest, only watched the half of the first episode and all of the third episode. And uh, kind of just casually was like, so you say it's a graphic novel? I don't know. Maybe I'll want to read that graphic novel. And I was like, I'll be right back. And I drove out to HQ and I grabbed the full trade <laughs> uh, set and brought it back. And I was like, well, you know, it starts off pretty harsh, but, it, you know, it chills out. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, smash cut to midnight last night. I peek in and she's halfway through the sixth book. And uh, we spent all morning talking about it. So so my pick is is tentatively, I'm only three episodes in, the Netflix series Lock and Key, but 100% the graphic novel, full set, full series of Lock and Key. Uh, I finished episode four yesterday, and that was the turning point for me into enjoying the show. Oh, wonderful. Uh, or at least I, I haven't watched any more since that one, so who knows. But Oh, shoot. So, so, so that means today I have permission to go another episode forward because I only sure. did three. I, I didn't know how many you would do. Yeah, I thought you would have gone more. I, I almost texted you saying I was feeling Oh, uh, yeah. No, I, we, we'll but, coordinate better. I'll, I'll go yeah. ahead and watch number four on there. Yeah, I, I, I think it I think it's all right. It, like you can definitely feel that it has got a four tweens vibe to it. Um and uh, some of my initial what hangups that, what that movement? What, four tweens. Yeah. Four tweens. The old we're, we're tween dance. Listeners. I'm tweening. Yeah. This is what animators call tweening. <laughs> Prez is moving his, his arms in a in a uh, a very a willy nilly motion as he signals that this is indeed for tweens. <laughs> <laughs> the the thing I didn't like in the first few episodes was that it all just felt really arbitrary and kind of I don't know their keys and no one no one saw this key at, in these various places. But I think I think it I think it picks up around four, which is a long ask for a ten episode or season, especially st for something that that ever so slightly slips into feeling like a CW show here and again. Yeah. I mean, it, I, 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 I think it's it's above that threshold. But but man, if you ask me if uh, I mean, which is weird because I think Lock and Key. Oh, no, no. It was a Fox pilot is. Mm -hmm. But but it was it was darn close to being a CW show at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that we're we're of a generation where we're, we're trying to convince our kids to read comic books. Yes, yes, 100%. You know, you know we're versus our parents are like, ugh, ugh, you're eating that. You're, well, you're and, like, and not only that, but the Watchmen is. I'm making excuses to my 15 year old daughter, like, ah, well, yes, the whole first comic is about nothing but the graphic, brutal, bloody murder of a man. And, uh, and then also this, this, this corrupt, awful, terrible other idea. Um, but. It's going to lighten up after that. Like, like I'm actively saying like, Ooh, if you could just get past that part, urgh, you're going to love it. Mm -hmm. Lock and key. Um, so, uh, uh, on one of my flights, uh, they had, uh, United as like, you can watch movies and stuff on the app. And, uh, I was just looking for something that I'd seen before that I could just kill the like remaining 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, I started watching uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. So again. good. And, uh, man, do I just love that movie. That movie's just so good. And uh, it, it is uh, uh, just so well done in terms of, like, being able to own 
its universe uh, and, and tell a fairly kind of complicated story of, of uh, you know, loss and grief uh, uh, while uh, uh, being on top of a, a, a very fun and likable uh, teen, you know, dramedy, but with Spider-Man and, and uh, stuff on top. So uh, it is, I mean, that, that cast is just such a murderer's row. Like, it, 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 you know, if there's one thing that Marvel has done so exceptionally well is like with like Guardians of the Galaxy and, and then these these Spider-Man movies is like you just want to you you love the like fourth or fifth most popular characters like there's there's always these little moments like the 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 whole uh, uh, relationship subplot of uh, his buddy and, and the girl that he meets on the plane is just just cracks me up like there's like never a moment where it's not you know doesn't just uh tickle me so I and far from home I I, I, I totally, and that's one of the things I think about, like what Marvel movies do well, and this movie really shines, is every character is given a moment to be interesting, to be, in, in some ways, be if not likable because they're a villain, but to be very interesting in their own capacity. And there's little background stuff in there. I mean, from the, you know, you look at the adults are shell, the adults are trauma, are in PTSD about the world they live in with a science yeah. teacher who now thinks witches are behind everything. <laughs> you know, that's, his, it's witches, it's witches. You look at Flash Thompson's character where you notice there's little things going on in the background about how, like, nobody there from the family to greet him. Nobody yeah. like this and how unloved this guy is. And so you understand why he's such a jerk. There are little details there. But if you're like, oh, I'm interested in Flash. Let me watch this through. I'm like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Like, you realize there's just so well developed. Yeah. And just like the, 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 the sight gags, the moment where they're in Italy and Flash Thompson is doing his vlog and he just gets nut checked by one of the other students. It's just like it's 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 that little teen like movie kind of stuff that they do exceptionally well while they're also layering this Marvel story on top of it. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's uh, I'm here to report it's still good. Uh Justin, you and I had a mutual friend who said that the post credit scene saved, his words, not mine, saved the movie. Do, do you yeah. feel like the movie needed saving? And was it saved uh, by that post credit scene? I, from my perspective, it, it did not save that movie. It saved another movie that had uh, so callously and ignorantly treated the characters that appeared in the post credit scene. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't know if it saved. I think that there is an element where if, if, you know, I don't know, can we spoil this? Like the movie's been yeah, out for like, yeah, yeah we're going to go in full spoiler mode. Spoil. Okay. So uh, you realize at the end that uh, uh, Maria Hill and uh, uh, Nick Fury are not indeed Maria Hill and Nick Fury. They are two scrolls, the scrolls, two of the scrolls that we met, in Captain Marvel, um, I I think it did more to legitimize the Skrulls as a race that can do that, which I think is the entire purpose of, of them in the Marvel universe, is that some characters may or may not be Skrulls and you don't know. Uh, it did more to kind of redeem the Skrulls in, from where they were in Captain Marvel than it did in necessarily save anything per se in Spider-Man Far From Home. Although I think there, there probably would have been a case coming out of uh, Spider-Man Far From Home that you would have you would have felt like Nick Fury was a much more feckless character uh, coming out of that if you hadn't had that reveal and realized that he was literally just uh, the fill-in uh, while, while other things were going on. So I, I think it was more about the larger mythology than necessarily the 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 micro of the movie itself but but i do think that it it was one of my favorite moments leaving the theater i'm like cool the scrolls are are important again and uh, uh nick fury isn't just this kind of jamoke who's getting circles run around him by uh you know mysterio and spider-man at, at the same time yeah, that's interesting because I didn't mind it because it sort of just conveyed that it's like humans, uh, especially like Nick Fury level, not altered humans, uh, just are less relevant as we move into, you know, celestials and all that other crazy talk. So it's like, um, I, I, I don't know that I needed an excuse for that. Like if, if Nick Fury ended up looking like, like uh, uh, I don't know, a weak character in a bigger world, good, because compared to 
the living gods we're about to watch in future movies, he is a weak character in a bigger world. But I I was I was annoyed throughout in that like I thought that he was made dumb just for the expense of the plot, and that annoyed me because I'm like, this is not the Nick Fury from all. And I don't because like we live in a world where you can have power, but power doesn't give you wisdom, and wisdom can yeah. anybody can have wisdom, and so some of the wisest characters we're supposed to have are the ones with no powers. I was just sort of like, I was a little frustrated. I'm like, man, like this is like. This feels like uh, shield level writing of like having like bad, bad, a little bit like just have the the bosses be incompetent so the hero can have their story. And then I get to the end, I'm like, okay, this was a, you tricked me and you wonderfully did it because I'm, I was a little. It didn't ruin it for me at all because like every movie you have to make some sort of allowance for like, meh, but. I, I didn't didn't have to save the movie, but it certainly made the movie a lot smarter for me. Yeah, I guess I guess growing yeah. up, I've always perceived Spider Man as a stronger, more powerful, more intelligent, more heroic character than Nick Fury. So in this, you know, wiener measuring contest, it's obvious to me that Spider Man should win, whether he's a seventeen year old kid or not. And and but, so in in that in that regard, I I didn't I, I didn't well, mind Fury, watching him you're, dunk you're, on Nick you're, Fury. You're, yeah, here's, here's here's the biggest thing though is that Nick Fury, at least in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is somebody that sees the entire field, right? We should always get the sense that what Nick Fury is telling people is like the exact need to know because he is is playing this like 3D chess thing, and you've already significantly weakened him with the whole uh, uh Hydra thing where he was was slow on on the uptick, but that shows how powerful Hydra was. Uh, and now, like, you kind of have to rebuild that a little bit, like, I think for his character going forward, if you want to keep him a central part of stuff. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I, I agree with Andrew. It, it would have been something that by the end of it, it might have been like, eh, like the Nick Fury sure seemed like an idiot uh, in, in a lot of that movie. But instead, they like a total win which because he's supposed to be particularly MC, he's the master spy you know he's the guy that's you know knows what wouldn't be fooled by like the slip up and stuff like this that you know that mysterio made or whatever you know, in theory and and I, and I was happy to see that you know kind of uh that it was like oh yeah that because it wasn't because Osborne like nick fury is playing like a big part in the next phase too where you know we're going into some sort of interstellar sort of war kind of thing and he's got to be the mastermind behind this Oh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and especially without an Iron Man character, now he is kind of the surrogate for like all human ingenuity, right? Like he is, uh, you know, you've you've eliminated Iron Man and Captain America, so now he's the guy that is like the stand-in for mortals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got to pick. What you got? Yep. Uh, so over the weekend, I watched uh, a new film on Netflix, uh, starring and co-written by Alison Brie. Uh, it is a film called Horse Girl. Anybody uh, hear about this? Heard the heard name? It. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. So Alison Brie is is a star. She is a kind of, uh, you know, sort of uh, what would what would you call it? Sort of a a, a wallflower type shut of in. adult. A little bit of a shut in. Yeah, she just she she's kind of. Uh, uh, alone. She doesn't have many friends. She uh, works at a craft store and she watches this <clears throat> supernatural esque show. Uh, and she's got there's a horse that she doesn't own anymore, but she visits a lot. And um, it it is uh, it is very similar to someone on Twitter reminded me of this. It is very similar to Safety Not Guaranteed, uh, both of which are uh, Duplass Brothers productions. And uh, it, I, I think it's very neat. It is uh, uh, a sort of what is reality, what is dream, what is uh, mental illness, what is uh, supernatural in real life. And I think it's interesting uh, in what it does with the ending. Um, and I think it's also kind of a, a it, it'll be a divisive and a divisive, yeah, divisive ending for some folks. Uh, but I think uh, it, is, it was a pretty good watch and a lot of a lot of good tension and uh, Alison Brie's great in it. So uh, Horse Girl on Netflix. Cool. Uh, my picks: Jojo Rabbit. Finally saw it. Enjoyed oh, it. I'm so oh, happy! I'm fun. so happy. Tell me everything you thought about it. Spoilers. Start now. Go. Spoilers. Uh, um, Hitler's in it. Yeah, I am. I'm a big Taika Waititi fan. I like you know Hunt for the Wilder People's like 
I, like one of the best things ever made. Um, if you haven't seen it, question your life choices. Uh, okay, uh, okay. What if what if I told you I haven't seen it because I'm saving it like my favorite dessert that I know I'm gonna love. I mean, if Taika Waititi said he wasn't gonna make any more movies, and if also if it's a it's a it's a rewatchable movie too. So, um, I. I I, I think I, I know the framework you're into because I have things where oh, it's great. I'm like, I want to wait until I really I, I know I will love it. I want to wait until the my the points where I really want to see this thing that I know I'll love. It. Exactly. But uh, uh, yeah. Um, and Hunter Day, Hunter Day is great. What we do in Shadows is great. I mean, he's just Thor Ragnarok is great. Um, this was the kind of the most Wes Anderson kind of looking, you know, Taika Waititi movie in, in all the right sort of ways. Um enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought that, you know, the, the kids were great. You know, Jojo, the kid who played his best friend, that kid was phenomenal. <laughs> well, I, lo was... I love that moment where late in the movie is like, it seems I can't be killed. <laughs> like as though remarking on how the script is written. It's so, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, it was so, so yeah, the, the kids were the, just the standout part. Like I would watch another movie, with just those two. You uh, know, Cause it just, yeah. Sam Rockwell was fantastic oh. in that. Uh, Rebel yeah. Wilson, she's 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 always just one note. Her jokes, you know, like uh, and the, the those bizarre um, uh, anachronisms where something happens and she goes, "Oh, I'm got." <laughs> like, uh, yeah. and, but uh, but uh, Scarlett Johansson uh, really given a lot of runway to just crush it with being yeah. this amazing, adorable mom who you just love with all your heart. Yeah, I would say that it's because it's a Taika Waititi movie. Everybody's gonna talk like Taika Waititi. You know, you're gonna get, you know, uh, you know, you'll get these. Yeah, that very much, you know, modern slang will be thrown in there, or whatever. And sometimes people say like it's, like you can spot. All I love all his movies at their points. Like that line could have been anybody could have done it. It's a funny line, but it's very much Taika just, you know, you know, Taika speaking through the characters, but. Well, and and I, and I love how unapologetically mashed up uh, it is, and and, and it, yeah. it, it it in fact there's almost like an inoculation period. That first five minutes is just like, guys, gather around. Look, we're in Nazi Germany, so let's get it all out of our system. Everybody say it along with me: Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler. A lot of that, a <laughs> lot of Heil Hitler. Let's get over the Heils. Let's get over the Hitlers. Let's 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 get used to that idea. Let's do it so much. Okay, are you ready? Now we're gonna tell the story. But also, let me get you used to the fact that they're training kids for war. Okay, now ready for the story and go. Yeah, it was just a, a really interesting telling of that and you all the things going on in the background and whatnot and uh and every character like it's another example like marvel like every character that shows up is a delight you know and steven merchant <laughs> the nazi hunter you know the ss shows up at your door you know it's bad but it's gonna be hilarious <laughs> you know, yeah. the kid, like oh you may have heard that hitler only had one ball it's not true he had four <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, Stephen Merchant, he's tall. He's a very tall man. Yeah. yeah. Yes, very tall, very talented, very tall. Uh, so yeah, I, I just yeah, Jojo Rabbit. It was it was delightful, very 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 delightful. So, um, that's all I can say. <laughs> it's been weird. Man, that Taika um, Waititi. Maybe someday it'll turn out to be something for him. We'll By the see. way, I, I came I came very, very close to just abandoning you <laughs> at the beginning of the show because apparently Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg are gonna appear on stage tonight in Dallas. And I was like, like, oh crap. Like if I can get if I can get to the airport in time, but it was not to be. I couldn't get there in time right. for the right. How so. fast can you drive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get on one of the scooters. I'm off. <laughs> 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 uh how do we feel about i've been trying to shorten the show just a little bit by doing like you know maybe af, if we have two segments of go good distance and not doing the third uh no i i, I like it a lot i think it, it's it's felt really tight and it hasn't felt like we've had to stretch it gives us it gives me more energy going into weird th uh, or after things um Speaking of which, which you will not be here for. Yeah, today? I, I have to bolt for after things because uh, uh, we have to shoot ads. Uh, is 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 that a, a problem or? Yeah, Brian. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a vote. We veto this, Brian. We veto this. Yeah, like <laughs> no ads for you. 
No. Uh, yeah, None. unfortunately, I have to I have to go shoot ads. But but I I've really been enjoying like just coming in, and in fact, that's close to what we've been hitting on cord killers as well. Is in that sweet fifty five minute range. Uh, everything just pops and keeps going. It, it's felt really good to me. Yeah, uh, we we were pretty short today. We I and I think I think it was last week or the week before where after things was longer than weird things. There's some like weird like balancing there, but. Yeah, I feel like it's on the on a on a on a closer side of the balance between short and long. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm, well, I'm gonna go record ads. Yeah, go. Have a good after things. Love you, gentlemen. Yeah. See you. Uh, I have a topic I think we can do for after things. It's sure. a it's a little newsy, but uh, sure. I think it'll be an interesting one. Um, like okay. Bryce is like the integral glue that starts the show and makes everything happen. But part of me wants to be like, oh, Bryce has something to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to say in every show. And when I wanted to go for the joke, but I'm like, no, nah, that sounds really horrible. So I won't. So <laughs> um, I'll take a quick break. That's cool. Sure, Everybody in the audience, we'll be right yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. We're going to do after things here in. Just a moment. Get some music going. So wait, what? Now I'm just seeing these random like. Yeah, I did not see a Dallas. Or monopolization stories that are popping up. A what? So the 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 Star Wars novelization is making news now because it, it's like filling in the plot holes of the ri rise of Skywalker. Oh, I did I did see a headline. Maybe it was yesterday about it. Basically saying like, we can't attract authors. Oh, no, 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 no. This is like just, so the, the big story that came out over the weekend because they were selling copies of it at uh, C2E2 was that Palpatine was a clone. Mm -hmm. the, the, that, that, that was like a thing that they spell out in the novelization. And then this is the story I just saw now on Twitter. Uh, uh, Ray and Ben Solo's kiss was not romantic. <laughs> so... What? Apparently, I mean, who knows? Weird. Oh, I shared one. Yeah, the mysterious relationship between uh, Rey and Kylo Ren lies at the core of the sequel trilogy, and uh, Rise of Skywalker revealed they are both part of a Force dyad, something very uncommon in the Star Wars galaxy. This occurs when two powerful Force users are connected on a uh, lay. Blah 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 blah. Uh, in a surprising twist, Ray Carson's novelization of Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker suddenly attempts to walk back uh, uh, the romantic connection. Advanced copies have been released, and readers are taken aback by the description of the kiss, which goes as follows. Uh, his heart was full as Ray reached for his face and let her fingers linger against his cheek. And then, wonder of wonders, she leaned forward to, and kissed him, a kiss of gratitude, acknowledging their connection, celebrating that they'd found each other at last. But then she drew back, concern on her face, as she could feel him growing cold. Ben smiled at her. She had given Ray back to the galaxy. It wouldn't atone for the darkness he'd wrought, but it was what he could do. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, that was stupid. Uh, the the thing about Palpatine being a clone, I did see that over the weekend. I thought yeah. that was why he was hooked up to Gladys and had all of Black Mesa in that big rock. I kind of thought he's a robot or something. Who cares? He's a robot or something. We're not. Play we're playing Calvin Ball. Why are you trying to bother explaining it? Who? I mean, that's. I guess that's that's the thing. Is at a certain point when they're like. He's alive, and they go to Swamp World, and you know, then the fifty thousand ships pop out of nowhere. Like, I was just kind of like, all right. I mean, I guess nobody cares, right? This is this is just a bunch of random stuff. Ugh, weird Star Wars. Maybe uh, maybe they'll do something with that again. Yeah. Do you, do you think they're yeah. gonna make? Oh, uh, do you think they're ever gonna make another Star Wars movie? When do you think the next Star Wars m movie will be? An oh, episode yeah. movie. Yeah gonna make another star wars are they ever gonna make another batman movie are they ever gonna make we'll another say when, Superman? when when or, when when uh oh i think we'll get something within the next three years three years okay oh yeah well, like so, a not not a spinoff or not a side thing um first off star wars conversation okay. about me for shame for shame for yeah. shame um uh i think i think what might be kind of telling is uh since we haven't heard a presidential announcement from bob Iger, 
Yeah. And Bob Iger has stepped aside to say, quote, work full time on the creative development at Disney. Yeah. Um, I think that his goal is he wants to sort of one is, you know, let uh, what's his face handle the financial stuff. I think mm -hmm. that he may want to take because I would say the biggest disappointment of his legacy and he's it's an amazing legacy. He's done a wonderful job. Disney Plus is off to a good start, although I just canceled my subscription because I'm like, what's there for me now? Um, he's done a great job. The one thing was that, you know, he made several big bets, was buying Pixar, um, you know, the Marvel deal, and then Star Wars. Financially speaking, Star Wars has very much likely made the money, but not it did not turn into the franchise like Marvel they wanted it to. And it yeah. would not surprise me if he may be taking a more hands-on trying to figure out how do they solve that. And they, they, they need more movies. They got to do that because they don't want to be over relying on Marvel to be the one that makes the bank on a regular basis. Sure. And with, I, I think, I mean, I, I don't think it would be a stretch to say the Star Wars acquisition, uh, everyone hoped uh, inside and out that that would be what they could do with Star Wars. And then that did not come mm -hmm. to fruition. Yeah, and it's, it was frustrating because, like, I remember with, you know, when Force Awakens came out, I'm like, ah, you know, it's Disney. They'll get better. Yeah. <laughs> the notoriously. <laughs> oh, I've never been more wrong. I've never been more wrong. It was just everything that was bad got worse. And, you know, and like, yeah, like I now like they're trying to explain like, like, like oh, it was a romantic kiss. Like, you know, all those other, you know, the the same sex characters that always have these romantic kisses when somebody's about to die and stuff and mm -hmm. all that, you know, it's like, I mean, it's just so puzzling. It's just like, so there's, so then there's no romantic relationships at all in, in this, in this new trilogy. Like but, uh, there's no, I, 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 I uh, how much, I guess, are lady. you supposed well, to lean into the here, novelization of a f movie as Canon as Holy scripture? I mean, it just shows you what a mess it was and how many yeah. just like loose ends that people are scraping through the novelization to find any kind of uh, reason why anything happened. You know, it's just, it's, I don't know. Yeah. It, Ray, I have to tell you something. No, no. What? I have force powers. Yeah. Everybody has force powers now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so weird. Super weird. Weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Weird stuff. Uh, you guys want to do after things? Sure. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, then uh, let's do after things in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Intermain, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello. Bryce. Mm -hmm. What up? So I heard about something uh, over the past week or two, and I wasn't I I wasn't convinced it was a real thing, and then uh, it was made very abundantly clear that it was a real thing. You guys, can, you... I, can I? I'm gonna interrupt right now. That's the world we live in, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, like like you hear this crazy sort of like maybe because you know? there's so much so. like oh there's big headline and then so much of it's like that's just the headline that's not actually it's more nuanced or it's not even real the headline like there's so much of that and it was a friend who was telling me about it and so that's what got me to look into it you guys do you both have spotify or uh at my, my wife does uh, wife so i periodically i'll if there's something exclusive to spotify then i'll just use her account got it andrew do you do you spotify or apple music or do you just buy music i just buy music buy music uh if i listed uh off some of the most popular spotify artists or some of the most popular artists on spotify let's play a little game and see how many you know just okay. just for just for example okay uh because i mean you like justin especially keeps up with with modern you know contemporary sure. music uh all right yeah. how about this one uh with 23.6 million plays charlie key charlie key anybody no no uh, it was uh that was uh him and him and the chocolate factory right that, <laughs> that, that old kerfuffle uh how about this 24.2 million streams karen borg karen borg no no yeah Mm, how Let me ask the question: are, Is twenty-three million streams a lot in that world? Considering like a lot of them are would be replays and whatever, and if like it is pretty, it is a significant amount. Okay, okay. Um, 
Uh, well, how about uh, 16.2 million streams? They dream by day. Nobody? No. Nah, I'm uh, out on that one. Uh, it, it, it doesn't uh, surprise me that uh, I also do not know any of these artists. These are a part of 50 artists that musicbusinessworldwide.com um, investigated and found to be, quote, unquote, fake artists on Spotify. What? And so what are they? What What is the music? So it's real music. These tend to be artists who are on some of the curated playlists of Spotify. So like music okay. to sleep to or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, par party anthems. No, that would be more pop stuff. But but some of, some of their curated playlists that get a lot of play, you know, they're promoted very heavily. And so what it turns out, so there's... This is a little bit of news, a little bit of reading tea leaves, a little bit of inference. But apparently, uh, these artists are are contracted or have are, are licensed through a company called Epidemic, which is a uh, publishing uh, a production publishing house. So if you if you think of like um, APM, a name that's more clever three months ago. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, this so epidemic is like one of many companies that buys up copyrights to music and licenses it out royalty free. We use we use a similar service for Scam Nation stuff. Every, every plenty of your content creators that you know and love pay a service to access a library of songs, kind of a, a Spotify for creators. Um, but now those artists are on Spotify and they are being promoted. Uh, uh, quote unquote promoted by Spotify by being put in these very high rotation playlists. Um, but many of these acts are, most of these acts are, are being go going through this epidemic company. Now the, 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 there, there are kind of two issues with this. I'm going to, I'm going to finish all the setup and then we can get it. Out. So the, the two issues are, uh, a, uh, these are not, it, uh, epidemic is not acting like a music pub or is not acting like a traditional music label right you don't they, they they're not passing along the spotify money to the artist normally in a royalty free situation the artist would get no money they would have already been paid up front epidemic has said they give the artists 50 percent of what their revenue from spotify would be just out of the goodness of their heart um but the other thing is that these millions and millions of streams still count against the public pool for revenue share. So the way Spotify works is all of the money that subscribers pay goes into a big pot. And then all of the plays for, say, the month uh, are put into a different pot. And that money is allocated based on overall play. Based so, on that, yeah. Right. So if you pay $10 a month and you only listen to Lady Gaga, Lady Gaga doesn't get $10 from you. She gets whatever the value of your plays are according uh, versus everybody else. So it become that's why a play on Spotify might only earn an artist a fraction of a cent. And yeah. now there are millions of plays that Spotify has seems to have some sort of deal with this epidemic company um, that are quote unquote watering down the pool the play pool right gotcha wait so this is the, there is some organization between epidemic and spotify like like there is there, there seems to be uh, some kind of collusion there so spotify has said that they pay that they pay out all of the artists on their service which would make sense if epidemic is giving artists 50% of their streaming revenue but the most of the music from these epidemic artists don't seem to be on other streaming services and uh, uh, and uh, uh, that that many that many millions of plays of artists being pushed into these playlists where where uh, more established or more worthy artists or more like real people artists um, could have those slots is so I, yeah go ahead yeah yeah, unpack this for me. So the 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 issue is is that all, there are a bunch of different artists, but actually that this we'll call it a label owns all those artists and gets a hundred percent of the royalties from that. So every time one of these people gets played, whatever, mm -hmm. um, Ep Epidemic is actually the one who's receiving that, and the money does not go to the artist because Epidemic reached an agreement with whoever they bought the music from. Um, Epidemic so has said that they split the Spotify money fifty fifty with the artist. 
Uh, but in, in any other normal instance where Epidemic would use any of the music that they buy and own the copyright for, the artist would not get any royalties because they do not have, they do not go through a performing rights organization like BMI or ASCAP. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm, so I, I guess I'm, I'm, and I'm naively, so so what's the issue? So uh, the issue is, and I, I guess this is, this is where, this is where it gets into an after things sort of issue is if you are a musician and you, you know that people are using streaming services. Streaming services are um, a huge deal. What what could you do about, and not just about this, but also in response to this, right? Well, you, because this well, is, if, if you looked at this in a certain way, it would look like Spotify paying or making a deal where they had to pay out much, much less to quote unquote real artists and writing off or uh, having some amount of the monthly pot uh, go to, you know, uh, pseudonymed uh, composers making royalty-free work, right? Like, it's it's almost like the Netflix original uh, idea, except Netflix's contract is using the brand power of directors and act- actors and actresses. I, I, I mean, if it's, if it's apportioned by, like, like per minute played or seconds played or however they do the math or whatever, like mm-hmm. whether even it's something in house, I don't have an issue. I mean, to me, like my, like I look at my frustration, the Twitter started from the moment you sign up for Twitter. They're like, Hey, you should follow Taylor Swift or follow Ellen, you know? And like, I'm like, okay, so you've decided who the winners and losers are on this platform already. We live right. in that world and we live in a world where, um, if, uh, you know, um, Taylor Swift has a new song. It's on Spotify. They're going to heavily promote it. You know, they're going to. She's going to be in the artwork. She's going to be in this. They've already decided winners and losers. And I, I, if once they decided that, I'm not going to be upset that if uh, some third party company, you know, is putting a thousand, you know, artists that they own outright and getting all the revenue from it because it's like it's already stacked against the indie. It's already stacked against you, you know? And mm-hmm. um, it doesn't bother me because in, in many ways, it you know, it means there's more opportunities because like, you know, Bryce, you know, you and a group of friends could say, you know what? We're going to put a ton of songs out there under one brand name, under one name, so we can increase our footprint, our likelihood of being heard. Great. You can play at that too. You sure. know, you could create a music collective, you know, and um i think we've got to rethink the way labels work and brands work and these things work because i see there's i see opportunity where there's other see chaos i see a ladder <laughs> sure. sure i mean I, I think number one uh, uh new boss same as the old boss right this this sounds a lot to me like payola and, and deals that radio stations made with certain labels to to make to ensure uh, uh some kind of result the difference here is that it seems like the major labels are going to be the ones that are the most upset because Spotify is kind of eating innings with cheaper content and they're making a choice to to put these in those coveted curated slots which which really that's that's the biggest thing that I think you're you're keying on is that yeah. it's fine if, if if epidemic is just throwing out a ton of royalty free music and they're just renaming it's basically like the the, the dude who does incompetech.com like Kevin McLeod which is yeah. used in like half of YouTube Everything. and podcasts, right? Because it's royalty free and it's good enough. And he's a prolific creator. It's basically like they took him and they just renamed him a bunch of stuff, uh, a bunch of different names, threw that in these like a curated playlist. And now all of a sudden they have this gigantic so, uh, uh, thing. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I view it as you're, you always got to be careful about when, whenever you're dealing with one central authority on anything specifically in terms of, uh, 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 entertainment, uh, but this this does not exactly shock me. So I just reading through the article here, or then this is from three years ago. But they yeah, point out they say older. that the 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 criticism of the labels is that they, the the unfounded, but the suspicion is that Spotify has reached an agreement with Epidemic, where Spotify will pay Epidemic less money per play in exchange for promotion or inclusion on those lists. So the idea is that you know they're saying, well, Epidemic, like if you guys will take a little bit less to get play. We would we'll give you promotion. So instead of having to pay, you know, um, the you actual know, whatever, rate, 
yeah, whatever. Yeah, somebody having to pay a different company because if we're if we're just going to record if it's going to be a playlist of easy listening stuff, we'll put you in there because if we put this other record company in there, we have to pay them full freight. But if we pay you fifty percent, then we get to keep the other part of that. And I'm like, like yeah, I have no I have no problem with that because part of it is that like these are things where often because you're not seeking the artist out by name, it's like yeah, play something in the background. Our our enemy is not. Is is not going to be you know another human being trying to lower the value of this product. Our enemy is going to be the completely AI generated background music sort of thing that's coming at us. It's going to come from the point when humans are completely removed from the equation, because there's music where you say I want to listen to music by this artist. Then there's another genre of music, easy listening, this other sort of stuff, where it's just filler and it can be good filler. And that that's going to be that's humans are going to be out of that equation very soon. In many cases, they already are. Right. And so I I see the record companies are upset because they see the value of what they provide is dropping, and it's dropping because now they have to compete with indies. They have to compete with you in your home studio making tracks. You know, record companies you know, might spend millions of dollars promoting somebody to do this, but on Spotify, I can say, you know, play me the latest Bryce, you know, Neshcom track as easily as I can say, you know, you know, uh, play me the you know latest you know owl city whatever okay which i don't yeah. know if there is a latest one it's very easy for me to say those two things so the accessibility is there i deal with this is my publisher is the is amazon i you know the largest you know retail company in the world is my publisher so i get all the advantages that come with that but also on that amazon platform anybody can compete with me anybody can write a book and that's how i got into the game because i started off as an indie trying to compete against you know major publishers and i said all right on this platform i can compete with you because i can write a good i can write a great book do a good description a good cover and i can do something you can't do the publishers won't do is i can iterate fastly i can fast i can update i can change and i can do things they just don't do and build myself a career doing that so i think there's opportunity there it's and just, it sounds it, like it, it's it's just a bummer. So the my the the buddy who was telling me about this has he he ha, he is a he is more popular on Spotify than I am, um, and he he has gotten some playlist. Like getting on these playlists is a big deal because right millions of people follow these playlists. They are like top of the thing. Uh, in some of them, like the music to fall asleep to, if people literally fall asleep to it, then that's hours of plays that get yeah. added to uh i get added to the pot um it's it just it it feels very different from say the netflix original model where it's they're either licensing stuff exclusively or commissioning stuff where this is so much of music be, it ha, it is uh is is supported by smaller artists that uh, well filling in those here? gaps with cheaper royalty free music or sound well, alike the, sound similar stuff is is really yeah. it's a it's a bad look for the platform well i'd say that the the, the, see, like the people were complaining here were the big labels were the ones that were upset because you know they were contingent upon that was in that article i saw was the ones they're complaining about that and some of the music licensing and i understand and i understand that i mean i and my role as a writer is i know that I am the platform that is making me is also the platform that I eventually may will have to compete with because that platform is looking for a way like, how do we not have to pay this person this money? How do we not have to, how do we maximize our profit here? And first it comes from being more selective in the content they use. Then it comes from dealing special deals. Then it comes from finding out, can they do it themselves in house and quickly? You know, you see that with Amazon, Amazon basics, you go to a grocery store and you see there's the house brands, you know, the house brands are the stuff that are knockoffs of conventional products. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the knockoff Oreo ends up displacing the original, you know, the Hydrox and et cetera. And I, and I, yes, I think it is frustrating, but it's also the music streaming services. And I've been having this conversation for years. The problem with that is if we all switch to music streaming services, the actual available pie is way less than what it is when we have people still buying stuff a la carte. It sounds like it's a great thing, but it's like the problem Netflix has, is Netflix has signed everybody up who wants a Netflix account. Where yeah. do you go now? You raise prices. You know That's the thing you do. And with music streaming, right. if you really look at that, then it becomes, we, you say, this is the total size of the pie once we all have subscriptions. Now we got to find ways to fight over those pieces of this. And we're seeing seeing this and i think it's like to think that somebody's going to act nobly 
We won't. Why would we expect them to? You know, we're not going to give up. You know, I'm not going to walk into a Walmart and go, man, you guys are charging me too little. Here's some extra money on the counter. You know, I don't buy ebooks and go, man, you saved me so much money in the print one. Here's some extra money. You know, mm -hmm. so. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I think that these are just they're they're innings eaters. Right. And either if there is collusion between Epidemic and, and Spotify, then it is something that I think you can as an artist, uh, uh, say, all right, well, uh, we would expect you to be an honest broker and you're not. Although again, I, I debate how much people should be surprised by that behavior, but even if they are not, there's always going to be those kinds of people, right? Like there's going to be the, the Spider-Man and Elsa, uh, you know, kind of like, like, like are on YouTube where they're just trying to rack up by whatever exploitation of the algorithm, uh, uh that, that they can just soak up seconds and minutes of of watch time like and or listen time that that is always going to be a thing in this world as long as that's the metric by which you are are measured and successful is how long you are watching or listening to something then this content is not only inevitable it's indeed encouraged yeah i would i would say that you know the a remedy would be if the labels are this upset is you know the talk of pulling stuff from spotify if spotify doesn't you want disclosure to ask Spotify? Are are you making these sweetheart deals? Are they doing this? You know, uh, you know. But part of and the problem I'm, comes I'm, into. I'm not just repping for for the the major labels, by the way. Like the person who I told me this is not represented by a major. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You're not, but I'm I'm also saying. Well, I guess my point is like saying that like um, Spotify by nature, because this is so much has to do with the playlists themselves. The playlists as being these con the, these these. Uh, containers of content and that is a sort of a form of content that spotify has created and said well if people don't want to ask for an artist they will ask for a playlist and that's a thing they control that's a thing that that they own and and they have sort of like headspace on it uh i i i, I it's i i think it's smart that they do this i think it's smart that they do this because often like i said it's this is content where you know if it's 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 one person you know hitting five different keys repeatedly on a keyboard versus a different person. I just want something to go to sleep to. Um, and like I said, that the, our real the real threat's going to be you know the algorithm that's going to come down and you know game over. You know, it's so. it's just annoying. It's just annoying to think like the huge catalogs of these, especially if we're talking about something like anyway i would we're just well i'll give you i mean it's I'll just give you, frustrating here, right like we've we we're coming from like like just are coming from a space where we had to contest continuously adapt like we built our magic business our magic retail business back when that's how we made our money through dvds came out dvds made it very easy to manufacture and sell magic because you could produce a dvd for 80 cents 80 yeah. cents in a case an amory case with a jacket all this so 80 cents per thing retail price would be 20 dollars. wholesale for eight bucks right so 10 times markup on the physical product right it was great it was a wonderful period of time because all of a sudden we could be selling these dvds i'd come up the magic trick over a weekend go call up the magic dealership on monday get an order for you know a thousand units and that was wonderful then the internet happened, you know, in a big, bigger sort of way. File sharing, or sorry, file sharing became, pardon me, guys. File sharing became, you know, ubiquitous, et cetera, what have you. And it got into the point, like, I knew, I knew we were done when I got a call from a guy who reviewed for a magazine. It was a newer Magic magazine, wasn't Magic. He says, yeah, I just reviewed your newest DVD. I gave you a great review. I'm like, huh, like, I, I would have sent you a copy. He's like, ah, oh, don't worry, I downloaded it. And I'm like, yeah, you downloaded it. Like, like, yeah, well, I'm a reviewer and all this. And he had his justification for doing it. I'm like, dude, like, one, I would have sent it to you. Two, the fact that you just, you're you're casually downloading and justifying it to yourself to do this. And then this is a guy that, like, a year later, funny thing, he started his own, he started selling Magic DVDs and stuff and saw his stuff on Fileshare and everything. So he started this organization to stop Magic piracy. <laughs> and I'm like, you, you you're the problem. You know, you did yeah. this. And then when you decide when all of a sudden it came out of your pocket, you got angry about it. And, and I was like, to me, it was like, we got to figure out something else because we had a good run. This was a cool thing, but now these things are free. And you watch, this is the period where Brian starts building up his YouTube channel where Brian's like, well, if people want stuff for free and that's why YouTube exists in many ways is because it was an answer to the problem with torrenting because you couldn't, for any many indie creators, you could not make money selling product. You had to put it on a platform like YouTube and go for an ad-based version of that. And music, we're watching this, 
the transition of this thing, like, hey, I use this platform, and this platform has all these listeners, which is great. They have the audience, and now I'm finding it harder to make money on there because they have that audience, and some of that audience does not care. They're not going to ask for my song by name. And if they're not going to ask me for it by name, then they're going to give them a generic, which is you go to the you know the cereal aisle and what do you see? Lots of generics and stuff. And so this is this is inevitable in every single platform where if you don't have a name that people ask for, then yeah, you'll be replaced by a generic. I, I yeah, I, I just I, I guess I just don't know what what someone should do. Assuming that that is the trend of, of it, it, filling it, it, these you, services it, with cheaper it, stuff. The only, only thing, the only thing that you can have any expectation of is that Spotify is an honest broker. And, and uh, whether they are blessing this like factory of cheap content uh, uh, because they literally just want to make sure that they're knocking down all the you know, Lady Gaga and Drake stream numbers and that therefore the, the big number that they would have to pay out is less, or... They have made a deal. Like I think the 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 desire for them to do that will be there. The only thing you can hope is that indeed this is just epidemic figuring out a soft spot in the algorithm and taking advantage of it versus Spotify saying we're gonna you know kind of uh, uh, so uh, cut down the the stream pool. I I would ass assuming that they're gonna try to maximize their profit either way. If I were an indie artist right now, the thing I would be trying to do would be to increase my footprint, right? And if I said, okay, I make, you know, I make you know music to sleep by kind of thing, then I would do a thing. I would go to five other friends and say, okay, we're gonna create a name. We're gonna promote the same name. We're gonna release all of our stuff under the same name because if we have five people repeating this name and making good quality stuff that fits this sort of model. Then we increase the likelihood of somebody saying, "Oh yeah, I want you know, I want play, play me the latest Night Sleeper track, you know, I want that, or play the Night Sleeper." That's what I would try to do because it's like if you, it's like a bar, you know, if you walk in there and you say, you know, just give me a beer, they're going to give you the cheapest beer, you know. If you ask, don't ask for something specific. And Magic, we dealt with this all the time, is magicians compete with each other because they're interchangeable. The ones that have name recognition don't compete with other people. And if you have an interchangeable product, then you will be replaced by another cheaper interchangeable product. And that's why you've got to build up the name. And like I said, the way to do that now is you think about collectives, you think about re, you know, reimagining how it means to be a label or to work together, because that's what you want is somebody to say, play, because if it costs the customer nothing, if there's no difference in the cost of the customer to ask for something that's more expensive, then you got to train them to ask for the thing by name, hmm. my opinion. All right. Well, uh, some thoughts. If anybody has thoughts, please uh, send them in neshcom at gmail dot com and uh, put after things in the headline in the subject line, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we'll right. we'll have your opinions next time on the show. All right. Here's my suggestion for picks right now. Okay. You ready? Yeah. ready? yeah. I need help. I'm putting together my uh, new office as I'm moving into my new place, and I need suggestions for like cable organizers, desk, workspace. What are little hacks? What are little things you suggest? Mm. Man, I am not good at cable organization. Uh, <laughs> anything, anything, uh, anything, I, desk, I'm anything. You're, you're... Uh, yeah, I mean, I got a standing desk from uh, 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 John Teasdale, uh, who did a little uh, California do -si do moving out of San Francisco and then back to San Francisco. But in the process, I got a standing desk, which uh, I really liked. Uh, uh, it, uh, you know, gives me a place outside of the studio where I can use, uh, uh, I can kind of, have separation of Ashley's doing something in here. Uh, mm. But I don't know the name of it offhand, but, uh, you know, I Hi. think it's it's helpful. Um, let mm -hmm. me see if I can look up the desk that I have at home. Um, it's from Ikea, but I don't think it is, I don't think it's like a computer desk. I think it's one of their like side table desks. Cause it, it, it's, um, it, it's a little thicker. Give me, give me a minute to look, to look well, it I up. Bought, I have a big L shaped desk in there. I got a big L shaped desk. I was okay. tempted to buy, I saw one that was an elevated one, but I didn't do that. But anything else you have, like, uh, uh, I don't know, like, or charging organizers or anything else like this, any of the little hat, you know, any little pieces of advice you have on. Oh, you know what? Um, get, get one of those, uh, USB multi plugs. So you plug it in, so you plug the device into power and it has like six or more USB hubs. I have one of those in, uh, oh, you've got one. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, it's a good uh, suggestion though. It's, it's a, a, other life hack, get one of those and put it in your couch. And then you got Ooh. charging cables under your cushion of your couch. 
There is a thought. That's a very interesting idea. See, uh, see. That's yeah, awesome. I've always been of the of the opinion that like. And this was more, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's if it's still relevant, but you can never go wrong. If you want to buy somebody that you love dearly a present and they have like a MacBook, like you can never go wrong with another MacBook charger. Nobody yeah. has ever in their lives said like, God damn it, too many of these MacBook chargers. You're always, it's always the other side of like, Oh God damn! I forgot it. I forgot it. In the, it's like one for the one for the the car, one for your bag, one. For well, you know every that's room interesting. House. That's a great suggestion because I'm thinking about because like we have we'll have like the the kitchen dining area and we have the living room area and I'm thinking like it might be it might be sort of neat to provide because we got like a high like a high like a counter style table for the kitchen yeah. which I love those and I said it might be practical to figure out a way to make it very easy if somebody puts their MacBook there or whatever to get power which might mean just putting like a, a bin or a little container next to the outlet or attached to the wall, you know, fashionably, tastefully, but you could just pull a cable from there and have power and do that. Cause that is the thing that like, you know, you look around, I look around at where chaos happens and, you know, I've got a thing on our counter here with just tons of chargers and cables and stuff because, Oh, it's USB. No, it's USB C. Oh, it's lightning. It's this, it's that. And you know, you just, these devices proliferate, they don't reduce. So, mm -hmm. um, well, that's helpful. Uh, uh, one thing that might be good to look at if you haven't already is lighting for a desk. Um, or, you know, you, you're probably going to do your streaming here from, for weird things at it. You do some of the Periscope stuff, right? Uh, yeah. I'm trying to look up the one that I have, but I look up it on Amazon and the lot has been replaced with a set of noise canceling headphones. So... Uh, just Amazon.com working really great right now. Um, yeah, but there there are plenty of those, and then uh, the one that I have has a USB plug in it, so I can plug in. Um, I have a wireless charger for my phone on my desk, and so it can plug right into the lamp there. Uh, and it's got it's dimmable, and you can change all the color temperatures if you'd like. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got one of those, but yeah, totally. Okay. No, that's suggestion. I think that's one of the things I'm thinking about is. I love now, like when I first built my studio, like easy LED ring lights weren't around and now all that stuff is there and I could put, you know, very low impact kind of lighting stuff in there that's unobtrusive. Mm -hmm. I know. Oh. I had to fill out all these foreign tax forms last night. So I just went over the new place to go do it because there's a lot more work surface area. And there's the first thing I know is like, man, I need a good desk lamp because it's dim in here, you know. Yeah. Uh, or, um, oh, um, uh, floor protector. If you don't have, a, if you've got a rolly chair and you don't have a floor protector, get oh, a floor yeah. protector. I just so, got one thing, I was, and I really needed it because my my wood the wood covering whatever was starting to curl. I wanted to go do my tax forms. I waited to do them because I didn't. The protector hadn't arrived yet. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to put a chair. I was on carpet. I don't know if I want to put a chair down on the carpet until I get the protector. You know. But then I'm like, ah, I gotta get it done. So, cool. Well, this is very helpful, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good. Um, and. Uh, I'm going to put noise canceling there, but I don't think I'm going to do a full wall. I think I'm just going to do parts of sections, but just minimize some of the echo. Yeah, just get we'll some, out. some of the cheap panels that they've got on, on Amazon yeah. and, and throw it all up. You've got, I'm sure you already know all about it, yeah. So question, last question is, and this might be helpful to other people too, is uh, I have a feeling this part of the house will get very hot. Any of you any experience with small uh, portable air conditioners or anything like that in the uh, studio? Uh... uh <laughs> No, I mean the hottest uh, studio I had to work in was in a warehouse in in Miramar in, in Margate, Florida. So <laughs> where I had to turn off the air conditioner to record anything. But uh, no. I no, I mean uh, uh, I would say yeah, just a uh, I mostly just use an oscillating uh, fan. big fan thing. I uh, yeah. have not used it in a studio setting, but the um, Dyson makes one of those tall fan uh, things. Yeah. Those are, those are pretty good and pretty quiet. I would not be surprised if, if uh, that would be good enough for you to have. In yeah, I got, the, I got a smaller dice in here, and I like it because it's quiet, and it does a pretty good job. So Yeah, cool. they I know that they make a taller one, uh, kind of a tower. Yeah, i seen that, yeah. Uh, yeah. But those are pretty that. good, too. So uh, side note uh, of might be useful is that uh, I needed to um, – one is I went in, I put in like an Ikea curtain to sort of separate sort of the space. And those were not as terribly difficult to install as I was afraid they would be. Um, which if you're looking for like, you know, a way to separate space. So Ikea has this like this curtain track, which you can hang from overhead, whatever, which oh. is pretty nice. 
Yeah. Um, so I did that, and then I did for uh, what's wonderful about the place is um, fiber. So I have uh, 500 megabit um, inside nice. of there, which is insane for compared to where I'm coming from here, which is like, you know, annoyingly no. I got the Amazon Eero Pro Mesh, and the difference between like a uh, repeater and a mesh is a mesh is you know basically is more efficient and gives you, you know, spreads your, your Wi-Fi throughout the place. So I put one of, I put a mesh in the house. So that's nice is that I've got, I love that. Those. And, yeah. Love those. Yeah. We got, we got a uh, Eros all through here because a lot of the, um, the, this is an old building. So mm -hmm. Wi-Fi gets knocked down pretty easily, but, uh, they have been awesome. Are you finding yeah. that the speed on those mesh, I've never used a mesh network or a Wi-Fi extender. Are, is the speed consistent? Is it, is there any loss of speed? Yeah. Not that I noticed. Wow. Okay. I yeah. I my two my five hundred my five hundred megabit went down to two hundred and fifty megabit. Okay. Um, I mean that's still that's still two hundred fifty megabit. Yeah, and I got the one that was supposed to not do that, and I got to go check the settings. But I also know that right now I'm on a ten megabit. So I I think that you know up. So I think that you know having something that's merely twenty five times faster than what I'm using right now will probably be acceptable. But there sometimes that is the issue with that. But I got that, and then um. Uh, yeah, the, the, the speed, I mean, and part of what you want to, part of the point of, of having like a mesh isn't just the fact of like having walls too. When you live in an apartment complex, you have all this other Wi-Fi competing with you. Mm. All the and other networks, networks, yeah. 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 Um, cool. Yeah, I think, I think we have Eero, I think Eero is what we have here at the, uh, at, at the studio here, because I think that's how Brian gets it out in his yeah. office shack. Um, cool. Well, that's pretty cool. Eero. E-E-R-O. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, any other office productivity thing? The portal fans from the chat chat suggestion, that sounds great. I'll look into the Dyson stuff for that because that is one of the things where I'm looking at like, like they this this unit, it's like an older, older building. Like I'll watch movies set in Hollywood and, you know, and I'll see this building in it. <laughs> um, but, uh, which means shows you when things were built. But the, uh, which means that like, um, the everything is old. It's like there's only one AC unit in this place. So, mm -mm. Uh, if oh, if you don't have one, uh, always very helpful to get an arm rest for your keyboard and a mouse pad with an arm rest built into it. Uh, yep. Uh, I, I I prefer the cloth ones, but I think it's cheaper for them to make like plastic with the the gel stuff. But I prefer the cloth and the fabric ones. It's a little softer okay. on the uh, on the skin. Yeah. Look for those. Uh, what else? I, th cool. I think that's it. I don't know. Oh, that's been very helpful. Good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, uh, I've got an after things pick, I suppose. If we are we are we still gonna do reg other picks? Yeah, let's do picks. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, oh, what was what is it called now? Oh no, I forgot what it's called. Um, yeah, give me a minute. I'm gonna have to relook this. <laughs> uh, uh, I got I got a pick. So um, Ashley, uh, uh, my wife, and I uh, were we may or may not be going on on vacation in a couple months, uh, uh, depending on on uh, you know how this coronavirus stuff shakes out. But we were thinking about going to Germany, and so Ashley is trying to brush up on her German because she mm -hmm. spoke German uh, with her family as a child, and and she wants to be able to be uh, you know semi. Uh, uh, conversant when we're out there. And so she's been watching German movies. Oh. One of the German movies that I saw that was very interesting is Look Who's Back, a 2015 <laughs> copy. <laughs> oh, uh, God. I remember this. It's the Hitler movie. It's a Hitler it's movie. It's the Hitler movie. Uh, so I watched <laughs> Look Who's Back. How's and, Look Who's uh, Back? Man, it goes some places. Uh, uh, it... it <laughs> It starts, uh, the movie begins with a very uh, kind of lighthearted, almost like a, a, a jackass-esque, kind of like a blending or Borat-esque kind of blending of a storyline with like live, what, what seems to be live interactions of uh, a him talking to modern Germans. Uh, uh, the, the story, if you are unfamiliar, is all of a sudden, Hitler's just back, and there's a guy who is fired from a job at a TV network, 
who decide, uh, you know, he winds up going viral with this clip of of Hitler, and uh, and now Hitler kind of uh, uh, becomes this ascendant sort of media figure as nobody's a, a, a able to figure out whether or not he's a performance artist or or he's just like a, an actor doing this very deep sort of role, but it uh takes a bit of a turn and uh, uh begins to get kind of darker and darker as uh, Hitler. <laughs> sort of uh, begins to again rise in power in Ooh. Germany. So uh it's it's one of those movies where obviously uh I mean there are like laws uh in you know German laws about how you can talk about uh or even laugh about uh the Nazis and Hitler specifically. So I think it it takes a turn that I think might be legally required um <laughs> uh in in German media but uh, certainly an interesting an interesting flick and and you you don't lose a ton uh just watching it with with subtitles so look who's back look who's back all right i got to pick uh yeah. if if anybody did did, did you, you probably you guys probably didn't see this i think it came out on netflix last year end of the effing world the end of the effing world i'm 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 familiar with it but i have not seen it no so supposedly that was based off of a graphic novel or a comic series and there's uh, a new netflix series adaptation from the same author called i am not okay with this um it is a uh, a, a story about a, a just a plain old everyday american humdrum girl uh who has uh, anger issues and uh realizes she has some sort of superpower um, it is played. It, it is very indie movie esque. It is very twee and um, uh, not not hipster. It wouldn't be hipster, but it's very like modern day uh, indie indie teen um, film take. I, yeah. I, it, it is hard to describe because calling ca the 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 notion of an indie movie has changed so much in the past uh, what decade. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's pretty neat. It is an easy watch, just like I think end of the effing world was. And, um, it actually reminded me a lot of, if anybody's played the game, life is strange. It reminds me a lot of the video game life is strange, which is all I'll say about that. Uh, but yeah, I am not okay with this on Netflix now. Cool. Cool. Uh, you know, I will, um, as far as a media pick, um, I, I'm going to just, Throughout the again, my two two of my favorite YouTube channels, which I, I get a lot of information from. One is Scott Manley, who covers space stuff. Scott stuff is really good. And then Two Minute Papers, which is another really good one, which covers like science research stuff. And I, I pull a lot of the content that I talk about here will sometimes be stuff that's covered there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, just really good. They're both just that we live in this wonderful age of one, uh, gifted explainers. Both of these people, Scott Manley has got a PhD in uh, astronomy. And so, and he's very knowledgeable about aeronautics and stuff too. So it's neat to listen to somebody who is an expert in their field who now has his platform via YouTube. And then Two Minute Papers, uh, I cannot pronounce his name, but he's a he just got, he has his PhD in I think uh, some form of computer science relating to artificial intelligence, machine learning, and he publishes and stuff. And he's got this wonderful enthusiasm in which he explains the latest developments. Like the latest article, if you see this thing of a bird uh, right below on the uploads, Bryce uh -huh. is. Um, it's a he'll do these covers these things pretty quickly and he talks about in that case is creating a 3d object from a photo it's in sometimes oh we've heard of this like this is the latest algorithm for that and he'll show you the improvements that are being made and so huh? this is an algorithm that looks at a 2d photo and extracts 3d objects from it and all sorts of cool stuff come that's out that's incredible so, yeah wow. Very cool and it's, it blows your mind. It's like when I talk about like, oh, things are coming. We're like, oh, you're crazy. I'm like, no, like I can show you what's in what's in the lab now. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're only so much, you know, not too far away from everything getting terrifying. Wow. That's that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very and, awesome. and this is. Yeah. You know, so anyhow, those are my picks. Groovy. Sweet. Nice. It's been after. Hey, good stuff. Thank you guys for uh, uh, for uh, uh, trying your best with that that story. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. It wasn't no, until I started a... trying to explain it that I was like, uh, <laughs> this is no, this is kind of no. Heavy. It is a good no. It's it's Bryce. It's a very real thing as a creative. It's it's the the 
the challenge we're in is um, I had lunch with a I don't know if you know him a guy named Tom Merritt, and uh, sure, we were talking about like how everybody's pushing for like you know like oh Facebook and all these things and Twitter they need to regulate need to regulate and, like one no two really no you you don't want those companies to get into the business of deciding what's facts or what's not because one having had a lot of experience in trying to teach critical thinking we can have a very long discussion on what is a fact. Um, the side note is like you, you, in, in Tom's point is like, you know, we should, people should be sort of smarter and wiser. I'm like, yeah. And, and under know the world we live in. And with this thing, like, I don't want to be callous about like, ah, well, these artists and the Spotify, like, yes, this is the world we live in. And we can say, no, we want, we want Spotify to not do this and to, and to treat us more fairly or pay us marketably. Maybe you could get a big movement to do that and change it. Eventually they will go away and there'll be some other thing. And it's better to just be adaptive and understand this this is how I do this as an author. You know, like I don't think about print at all. Like I just signed an audiobook deal and it's a digital only. I'm like, sure, fine. Who do who do I know that listens to C you know, has D CDs and stuff? Right. You, you know, don't, and, you don't and, want and the also, you don't want to get on that uh lucrative uh what is it, cracker barrel audiobook yeah. lending program? Yeah. Well like and but you but there uh, you you do say okay the opportunity cost is I will not I'm not I'm gonna ignore this thing now because I know the future is going to be I believe the future to be in this other place here I did that when I signed with Amazon with publishing is I knew that like yeah my print book sales are in decline and it'll and and print book publishers are gonna be way less inclined to make a deal with me because they're gonna be ah oh, he's digital only and I'm like fine fine I know the upside for me in being digital and I know where I know where my grow the bit fastest growing part of my audience is. But you have to, I guess it means you have to adapt. And, and even now it's like, like, you know, Amazon could come out with a, a book writing algorithm any day now. And I'd be like, Amazon's like, hey, Andrew, it's been a good run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thanks. there will be, we've, we talked about this on Weird Things, God, at, at least a year ago, uh, uh, talking about like, well, what happens when, um, you know, as 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 uh, what happens when there are machine gener when there is fully machine generated music, and I think there was there was some PR thing from maybe the past few weeks where an advertising company went and did that uh, not for a client but just did it on their own, um, and you 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 look more into it and it's like well they still had to do these parts human uh hu you know by the, by the power of humans. But a lot of it was not, and um, it's it's bec because of how open music technology is. It's gonna it's it's not gonna be very long before we mm. have to figure this out. I mean, it's already like there's they're starting to think about like, well, what are the legalities of if you make a mach what if you make a machine learning song, but you only teach it on copyrighted music? Is that okay? I think that the leaning is uh, that legally it is okay, but I ooh. went through this with uh, a, a company mm -hmm. about texts and stuff because I was asked about trying to help them do sort of things with books and stuff. And that was the long discussion about like that you're, 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 we don't have the law to specifically say what's legal or what's not legal. I, w I would presume to believe that after a period of time that you're, it would be entirely legal because it's a new work. I can take four different works, combine them, and derive something new from them if I'm using multiple works. Um, that would be my presumption. We can only make presumptions, but that is the world we live in. But, you know, the garage band was disruptive. And if you were making, if you were a person who invested a lot in better tools and old studio equipment and all that, garage band was frustrating because in one hand, yeah, it's not that, yeah, it's not that good. Well, garage band got a lot better. Garage band gave us like Billie Eilish, you know, and gave us a generation of artists, you know, rock band <laughs> gave us post Malone, you know, yeah. and we have an entirely new generation of artists that we're always going to want them because there's going to be places the music to sleep by. Yeah, make a robot make it, but then I'm going to want music by a personality and by a person. And I think that's the thing everybody has to think about is you've got to be you've got to put your person more into it because it's going to be I'm either going to buy things from people, yeah, or I'm going to have machines take care of everything else. It's very interesting. There's an interesting thing happening on TikTok right now where there's a new it's, it's not that new relatively speaking, but there's a new song. Uh, that is one of the many TikTok sort of viral memes um, called Say So from this artist Doja Cat. And it's interesting that it, it, 
if I was if I was uh, a little more conspiratorial minded, I would think, oh, TikTok saw how popular Little Nas X was on its platform. What if yeah. they took another viral song and like the thing is so like the song has been out for months and months and months. It's only now getting a music video, but the music video is getting some promotion. People are clipping it, putting it out. Um, and on TikTok, where it's all or it's mostly algorithm based, it's just it's interesting to see them try. It feels like TikTok is trying to do their own Lil Nas X style push with with this Doja Cat thing, and I, I think it's kind of working because I've seen rumblings of it in the normal places where that stuff kind of doesn't surface. I I believe I hundred percent believe that like. You know, there are people within within uh, these different when, whenever whenever there are eyeballs to be, you saw YouTube studios. Oh, that's great. YouTube studios. Yeah. YouTube studios is also like, how do we get a piece of the of more a bigger piece of the YouTube pie that we've created to this platform by having our own artists, our own people to promote? We see this everywhere. And I totally believe in the case of Spotify that they will be creating content or incentivizing content. They have better deals because it's what you need. They need to maximize the content because like, their margins are not that great. Sure. You know, and and they're they're facing a threat from, you know, their biggest competitor now is the largest company in the world, you know, with with Apple willing to take a loss for years, yeah, to get Apple Music in place, you know, yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, uh, good good after things, everybody. Uh, good uh, good weird things, everybody. Uh, yep. yep. Uh, Justin, got any streams coming up? No, 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 none uh, today, but tomorrow, obviously, Super Tuesday, so covering that right up until we got to do Night Attack. Nice. Andrew, got any plans to do some more uh, mobile streams? I would love to. I'm going to be doing probably a little bit active later this month. I've got a, I got a book. I got to get it, get into my publisher, so let my life's from there, but then I got a new book coming out, Girl Beneath the Sea, which is coming out soon, nice. and so I'm going to be talking nonstop about that. So promote, 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 promote. Uh, I'm shit, sure shit. I will have another Friday stream. I will probably not eat 13,000 calories worth of fast food. Oh, but Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure I'll do another stream on Friday uh, in the newsletter. We'll be back with Cord Killers in a couple of hours. Um, thank you guys just for joining us. Talk to you later. Bye, Bye man. Thank you all. See you.